they were happy with emigration, they, which will happen. Uh, people will at least move states. <laughs> Hold on. They were happy with emigration? Um, um, I, also, I'm no longer saying my history is bad. I don't think my history is bad, actually. I think my history is better than 99% of these f losers. Um, I'm almost positive that Hitler made specific requests into other territories. F I'm trying to think of the country. Um, I don't think it was Yugoslavia. I don't remember what it was, but I know that he made specific requests into other territories saying, hey, Bulgaria, I think it might've been Bulgaria, where he's literally saying, you need to kill all of the Jewish people there. <laughs> the, the idea that he was okay with them emigrating is absolutely not true. They, the Nazis literally called it the final solution, implying they had tried other solutions before. <laughs> Loner box. Addressing the allegations. The allegations. Mama, President Sunday, and Doe. Damn. Nightmare blunt. They don't location. care about the truth. They just make shit up. Based. The True. more ridiculous the claim, the better. True. From an anonymous Twitter user in the year of our Lord 2022. It began with an egg. On October 20th, I was reacting to a video featuring the content creators DJ Mule and Kira Chats, aka Bad Bunny. Ooh. In the video, they described the state of trans rights in the US and the UK as, quote, an ongoing genocide, to which I disagree. This is ground zero, where it all started. Ooh. Right. Um, sure he doesn't know about the trans genocide? Big amateur move. Amateur move, dumb fuck. We can discuss this, just how genocidal Turks are. Because when we uh, say Turks are genocidal, I know we've been using that word a lot to describe what's happening um, in various parts of the world. Yeah. I'm talking right now specifically about the UK and the US, but mm -hmm. it's not exclusive to these two parts of the world, um, of what uh, people are doing to, like trans are doing to trans. That was your quote, wasn't it? Wait, was that my quote at the beginning? <laughs> It'd be kind of funny if it was. I don't remember why, but. People, uh, including trans children. And I know we've been calling that genocide, and it's true, but yeah, it doesn't change the fact that this is absolutely true. And I disagree with that. Okay. This sparked an argument between me and my audience. About 40 minutes into me sawing out at my viewers, a streamer named Polly People appeared in my chat to join in the debate. I offered to have a conversation with her, and she accepted. Today, a month and a half later, I am now in a position where enough people have misrepresented this debate and the events that have transpired since that I feel like a response is necessary. This is not intended for the other people involved, as I don't believe they have shown any willingness to honestly engage with my views on this issue. Ooh. I'm only doing this for my own peace of mind, and so my audience has something to refer to in the likely event that this is ever brought up in the future. On top of that, the behavior of some of the people involved in this has been a little bit too interesting for me not to comment on. As for you guys right there, I've seen you all taking to the Twitter front lines to defend my honor. Well, might be a bit easier now, who knows. Because I feel like my views have been so grossly mischaracterized, I'll start by laying out my positions so they are all easily accessible and in one place. My position on trans rights in the US. As I understand it, the last two decades have seen an explosion in trans acceptance and visibility. The number of trans children getting access to affirming care has been rising steadily over the last few years. Trans people are increasingly represented in the entertainment industry as equal human beings, whilst the insensitive tropes of the mid-2000s and before have aged out of fashion. Meanwhile, polling numbers in Europe and North America show a consistently increasing level of support for trans rights. Unfortunately, this progress has also been part of a double-edged sword. The progression of trans rights has recently been coupled with an unprecedented level of scrutiny and disgust from the right wing. Trans people are now, perhaps more than ever, living under a magnifying glass and being cynically used as a political wedge issue by conservative lawmakers and pundits who seem incapable of winning support by any means other than culture wars and fear-mongering. Where Republicans may otherwise worry about alienating potential voters by attacking migrants and African-Americans, they don't have this issue when it comes to trans people. The result has been an onslaught of dehumanization, bunk science, and nearly 400 anti-trans bills filed in the last four years. Though only 39 bills of these have become law, though only 39 of these bills have become law, their impact shouldn't be understated. In Texas, Greg Abbott's insane directive has allowed the state to open child abuse investigations into parents who provide gender-affirming care to their trans children. These investigations have been repeatedly blocked thanks to the works of organizations like PFLAG and the ACLU, but it shouldn't be surprising that several families have already fled the state.
The recent groomer panic has become the latest addition in the right's playbook of stochastic terrorism, and the wave of attacks against trans people is no coincidence. I don't think there's any hyperbole in saying that every single hack commentator who thought it was a good idea to spend the last two years smearing trans people as child abusers and predators deserve their share of the blame for events such as the recent shooting in Colorado. Unfortunately, this whole saga has almost nothing to do with any disagreements about the empirical facts of what is happening. If you oppose every single one of these bills and you believe the best thing to do now is support the trans advocacy groups and legal organizations that have been working tirelessly to keep more of these laws from passing, or to mutual aid orgs that have been extremely effective in protecting trans people from laws that have been passed, we agree. But. Or, if you are from the more voshist wing of the internet, Ooh, you might also think it's vocious. a good idea for LGBTQ people vocious. and allies to arm themselves in case things take a turn from the worst. To that, I also agree. <clears throat> I've been to the US a couple of times. It's a strange place with a very pre unpredictable future, and if I lived there, I'd probably want to be armed too. If you are in the States and you're interested in helping, I've linked a few charities, advocacy groups, mutual aid orgs, and legal groups in the description which will be in the YouTube video. These were recommended to me by trans people in my community. They all accept donations, and most of them are looking for volunteers, so go wild. I've tried to keep the rest of this story as educational as possible, but for the most part, the rest is internet bullshit. Gonna be a little bit semi-scripted here as well, so what's on the screen might not make complete sense on its own, but it's close enough. My position on genocide. To be clear, the one thing I'm contesting here is that there is currently an ongoing genocide in the United States. However unlikely I think it is, I do not disagree that the current situation, in particular the rhetoric and political ambitions of various pundits and legislators, could lead to a genocide in the future, and have said as much in my very first stream on this topic. I think we're at the beginning stages of a potential genocide. Okay, that's a bit more acceptable. That's me reading a chart. Because you can look at the stages of genocide and be like, you know, stage one, two, three, four, five of dehumanization, of otherization, of uh, mistreatment, like uh, legal mistreatment, all that. Yeah, you can see all of that. Problem is, like every ethnic minority in every country in the fucking world is at some stage of genocide. <laughs> okay. The problem is, like, that's not what makes it a genocide. Okay. That just means that we have, like, systemic discrimination. True. And, like, unequal rights. That's not genocide, though. Okay, the same position I hold now. My disagreements are with the following. One, that there is currently an ongoing genocide in, against trans people in the United States. And two, that Republican lawmakers are currently legislating with the specific intent, covert or otherwise, to kill trans people. First, I will try to make as clear as possible my opinion on what is and isn't a genocide. I'll give two of the most well-known definitions and then my own thoughts which rest somewhere in between them. So, what is a genocide? <laughs> Your mom. Genocide oh, is I'm first so and foremost I'm so, an international that's the only time crime. I'll do that. International crime being a collective term for the most extreme violations of international law. The others being war <clears throat> crimes, crimes against humanity, and the crime of aggression. Of these four core crimes, genocide is widely understood to be the gravest. The term was first coined in 1944 by the Polish lawyer Raphael Lemkin, primarily in response to the Holocaust but also to other instances in history such as the Armenian Genocide under the Ottoman Empire. After outlining his thoughts in a book called Axis Rule and Occupied Europe, Lemkin led the campaign to have genocide recognized under international law. His definition was then negotiated and narrowed by the United Nations and was finally codified as an independent crime in 1948. The UN Definition of Genocide. I'll just read this and then we'll talk about it. So, Article 2. In the, pres in the present convention, genocide means any of the following acts committed with intent to destroy in whole or in part a national, ethnical, racial, or religious group as such. A. Killing members of the group. B. Causing serious bodily or mental harm to members of the group. C. Deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction. That's what people do to DGG, by the way. D. Imposing measures intended to prevent births within the group. E. Forcibly transferring children of the group to another group. So, when people say the UN definition of genocide, they don't just mean the words in here. That's not really how you would approach any law or even just any concept. The, the words here are like half of the definition or less than half. The much bigger half is precedent. The way that each of these terms are understood, the way that the law is practiced and 
used either by historians or by lawyers or, for example, that word destroy there, destroy specifically means physical or biological. So killing people or forcibly sterilizing them. That's like the main What about there. banning their TikTok um, accounts? Intent, intent means, uh, I think the Latin term they use is dolus specialis, which means special intent, which means it has to be like um, premeditated, calculated, uh, planned in advance, like that kind of thing as well. And it has to be shown that the people were intending to physically or biologically destroy. So, and killing here means like directly killing, as in the state or an army directly killing. Uh, serious bodily or mental harm to members of the group. If you look at the precedent for that, that is basically always um, in reference to rape or torture. Like, you know, again, like inflicting torture, not like indirect or whatever. So, um, conditions of life calculated to bring about its destruction in whole and part. This will be more to do with something like um, uh, something like depriving them of food and water. That's usually what that refers to. Sometimes I think it refers to like very essential medicines. Like if uh, I think this was brought up when Russia was blocking uh, medicine and uh, was it Red Cross from going into Mariupol? So yeah. Um, so yeah, these all have like much more specific meanings than just randomly interpreting it. Um, of course, there are a few contentions. One very big one, gender and uh, gender identity or sexuality isn't there. It should be. I think everyone would probably say that they should be. I think another one would be uh, the way that it evolved over time. So if, for example, you might say this special intent thing is a little bit too specific. Uh, first of all, intent, you can prove with circumstantial evidence. So you couldn't do the whole Holocaust denial. Hitler didn't order the Holocaust on paper. Like you can't really do that because there's a metric ton of circumstantial evidence surrounding that, like the idea that he knew. So. Um, but if you think something like when it comes to intent to destroy and you think um, something like what if they were allowing a destructive course to continue with intent to destroy? Um, if you believe that, um, well, the UN wouldn't agree with you, but historians would. Historians are a lot less generous to the perpetrators when it comes to intent. So where international law might not say like... Um, events like the Holodomor or the Irish famine or the Great Indian famine were genocidal because they weren't intentionally caused. A historian might say that there's enough evidence surrounding those three events that the uh, legislators and people in power at the time used those events and allowed them to carry on deliberately as a way of uh, getting rid of the undesirables. So that's where the intent bit is a bit more loose in history. Um, destroy, this is the, probably the biggest bit, um, the original definition, <laughs> proposed by Raphael Lemkin, destroy included cultural genocide. So that's probably the main thing there, intent to destroy. Um, because according to Lemkin, you can have a genocide without anyone dying, no, without anyone being killed by the state, technically. Um, he outlines that quite a bit. I'll maybe elaborate on that in a moment. But today, I think in international law, they call that ethnocide. But yeah, cultural genocide is kind of a thing as well. And I think going in common parlance, because I'm not like a lawyer. I think if like a Ukrainian or like an indigenous person told me like they were like that there was a genocide at the hands of colonizers or like the Soviet Union and all that, like, yeah, I'm probably not going to split hairs over that. Like cultural genocide is definitely like a valid term, I think. Cringe. Um, another thing, political groups, that was another one. Political affiliation was a category here from Lemkin, but it got taken out of the UN convention because mostly because Stalin didn't want it there. So there's been a few shifts, and I actually don't disagree with a lot of what Lemkin wanted to put in there in the beginning. So there you go. Though Lemkin's definition is more broad, and I don't disagree with a lot of what he included, the acts he does describe as genocide without killing, which we understand today as cultural genocide, were always in the context of colonialism. They included the residential school systems in the United States and Canada, the destruction of Irish culture under British rule, the Japanese occupation of Korea, etc. In his own words, acts of cultural genocide include language bans, forced exile of individuals, specifically cultural representatives, forced re-education, as well as the banning and destruction of national treasures, libraries, museums, artifacts, and art galleries. There's actually a bit here where cultural genocide was almost put into law. But then people realized it was cringe. I think it's just down here. He describes the acts um, here. Again, you can probably 
you'd have to consider precedent for all this as well. Obviously, the law was never put into place. I don't think cultural genocide to this day is still a crime, which is unfortunate. But historians actually do have a way of interpreting each of these things. So forcible transfer, this is like every cultural genocide that I know of, I think is like residential school systems or forced re-education or the state-run settlements in Australia. Uh, systematic exile, this is a huge part of it. There's lots of, uh, especially with the Soviet Union or with the Nazis in Poland, there was a lot of exile. Um, although they would say that you can technically have this without killing anyone, uh, I think it's been, I can't, I don't know if you could find a cultural genocide that didn't also involve the states killing people. Soviet Union would, as part of cultural genocide, would murder uh, intellectuals from the states that they invaded. Um, like in Australia, there were loads of like massacres against indigenous people as part of their cultural genocide as well. So um, I don't think it's necessary, but it seems to be quite common state and military killing. Fuck. All right. We all good with that. We got a rough idea. If I was going to explain this to a 10 year old, by the way, just like to summarize, I would say um, genocide is the state or a military killing a group of people because they're that group of people physically killing them. And cultural genocide would be uh, killing a culture through measures such as this. We get it. Okay. Cringe if you boy. were talking about somewhere like China, the reason they're saying that what's happening in China is a genocide as well as a cultural genocide would be this one here, the forced sterilizations in Xinjiang, because that is biological destruction. Like they seize you, they put you into a camp or a prison and they just forcibly sterilize you against your will. Um, but you might ask, if they stop the sterilizations and everything else carried on, would it still be a genocide? Well, according to the UN Convention, that's a bit harder to prove, but in history or cultural genocide, it definitely is because of all the other things. The re-education, destroying um, mosques, rounding people up, sending Han Chinese people into the houses of Uyghurs against their will, all kinds of shit like that, yeah. Anyway, a final, more popular source here would be the 10 stages of genocide based on the essay by Dr. Gregory H. Stanton. Again, when you're looking at this one, it's really important to consider precedent. You probably don't want to jump in and just interpret any of these words very loosely. Uh, if you read the original essay, this is a mistake. I think it's a mistake people make a lot all the time, actually. You know, like with uh, 14 points of fascism, if you just read the little headings for each point, you can shoehorn just about like any populist into being a fascist because there's so much like what stage are we on for, for fascism guys but and they don't have to go in the order itself, oh! the paragraphs and the examples he gives, it's a lot more narrow it's the same with this for example symbolization sounds quite broad but the examples he gives in the essay are all like really extreme so the examples he gives even in the box in the circle here it's like um yellow stars for jews in germany or uh blue scarves for people in uh, under the Khmer Rouge or white armbands for Bosnians during the Bosnian War. So it's all quite like extreme. Uh, but the way they've worded this summary, I think is quite good. So here, uh, Gregory H. Stanton, president of Genocide Watch, developed the 10 stages of genocide, which explains the different stages which lead to a genocide. At each of the earlier stages, there is an opportunity for members of the community or the international community to halt the stages and stop genocide before it happens. That wording is very specific. Um, stop genocide before it happens. So just being on a handful of these stages doesn't immediately mean there's a genocide. He doesn't say exactly like when the genocide starts according to him, but when you look down here, there's a bit of a clue. Preparation, perpetrators plan the genocide. They often use euphemisms such as the Nazis phrase the final solution to cloak their intention jesus so at seven <laughs> it's planning and the example of a genocide being planned they use as the final solution so and then eight persecution genocidal massacres begin so it happens quite late according to this guy and he's suggesting that the final solution was the genocide so that that's what he counts as genocide in germany Keep that one in mind for later, okay? That's going to be, that's going to come back a little okay. bit. Okay, gotcha. And for the rest of it, he doesn't really specify exactly what order it can happen in. They can happen in different orders. Um, for example, Nuremberg Laws actually came before the stars, so, you know. Um, but the other thing he stresses as well is that, like, um, everything here, there are lots of things here that you could say apply to just about every discriminated group on Earth. I think the thing that Stanton, I think he mentions it in the essay as well, I might be wrong, is that every genocide starts with these early stages. 
but very few groups at these early stages ever end up becoming victims of genocide. So that's like, again, just being a bit more careful with how you understand the terms and where they were coming from, because there's a bit of misuse that goes on around this. An example, I should give you one here. This is an example, I think, of someone quote unquote doing it wrong. Um, <coughs> because there's an anti-trans genocide building and we're entering oh, step Aaron eight. Reed, so I know this the example fucking Stanton gave of step at eight Aaron the mom was yeah. the final solution. Like Nazi death squads and death camps. So <laughs> I think that's maybe a slightly broad interpretation. Like I don't think hate crimes count as genocide, but yeah. You know, different Ooh. kind of crime. Okay. As a side note, I imagine some viewers at this point have already made the objection. Wait, law? What are you, a fucking liberal? Yes. To which my answer is, first of all, genocide's a crime. Like, under whatever definition you're using, it's a, it was coined and it's used as a crime. But uh, To much my answer is, I will never appeal to a law unless I think it is, at least to some degree, morally defensible. I have given my issues with the UN definition of genocide, but I nonetheless think it's important that people can at least have some shared understanding of what the term means. International laws are far from perfect, but I do believe the world is a better place when nations, better. for as long as they exist, can have some basic understanding of what is morally acceptable and what is not. The Refugee Convention allows victims of war and persecution to seek protection across borders in a way that wasn't available to the Jews in Nazi Germany. Our shared understanding of border sovereignty has left Russia- Jesse is a fascist, according to who's Jesse? Jesse Single is a fa oh, fucking fascist. Yeah, she's that Aaron person's unhinged. Almost completely isolated in its war on Ukraine. The legal diplomatic agreements between nations have allowed us to give Ukrainians the means to defend themselves against reckless acts of imperialism and, incidentally, <coughs> genocide. This is a video giving the case for why the Russian war in Ukraine is genocidal. This is a protection that people in Eastern Europe unfortunately didn't have when they were attacked by the Nazis and the USSR. With that, these are my reasons for not describing the situation in the US as an ongoing genocide. Uh, One, oh. descriptively, I don't believe it works. Horrific as they are, I see no use in putting the actions against trans people in the US under the same umbrella as what happened in Bosnia, Rwanda, or the Ottoman Empire. Nor do I think they have much resemblance to the historical acts of, mm, of cultural genocide, <laughs> such as Canada <laughs> <Miss> or Korea. <laughs> Two, because of this, the ways we respond to something like discrimination and the ways we respond to genocide are radically different. Sorry, we don't do that anymore. Likewise, the ways we avoid a genocide are also different from the ways we stop one which is ongoing. If a state is committing genocide, it's very unlikely that acts of civil resistance are still an option. Bearing in mind, genocide is an international crime. Historically, genocide has justified economic sanctions or even military intervention from the international community. Whether you agree with it or not, one of the justifications given for the NATO bombing of Yugoslavia was that it prevented a repeat of what happened in Bosnia. Genocide. At a domestic level, genocide typically describes a situation where it's perfectly acceptable for people to take up arms against the state. It would be difficult to condemn the Rohingya rebels in Myanmar or the Jewish partisans in Eastern Europe because theirs is slash was a position where the only means of combating the state's actions is to fight. Though I can imagine scenarios where violent resistance against the state or even other civilians would be acceptable, I don't believe the US is quite there yet. Three, I believe that in order for us to engage with each other, a shared understanding of language is fundamentally important. If you've ever been called a communist for supporting socialized healthcare or a neoliberal for supporting the arming of Ukrainians, you should know what I mean. Likewise, if a community online decides in its own in arbitrary interpretation of what constitutes a genocide, then goes on to accuse people who disagree with them as engaging in genocide denial, I believe that is a problem worth talking about. This is a stream from uh, Demon Mama titled Destroying Genocide Denial with Facts and Logic, which she gives her case for why there's a trans genocide in the US. In my research on this topic, one of the things I've noticed is that none of the major organizations who are fighting these laws have been using the word genocide. At the moment, it seems like something that hasn't really escaped the confines of Twitter and a few online leftist spaces, but the arguments people have made for invoking it have been varied. Some are just clear misinterpretations, but I've also heard people arguing in favor of calling it a genocide, not so much for descriptive accuracy, but as a means of shocking people into action. The problem is that once a word like genocide is invoked, 
every other term feels deflating by comparison. In spite of this, I do think it's worth stressing the point here. To use a term other than genocide is not to downplay the situation. Despite not having the same rhetorical flourish, discrimination kills people. It causes trauma, hate crimes, suicides, and murders. People have a human right to flee their homes as refugees to escape persecution, human rights abuses. Only two years ago, millions of people rose up in protest against systemic discrimination towards black people. For all the pain, suffering, and death <sighs> that was highlighted by the BLM protests, I don't remember anyone ever using the word genocide. That's because genocide is a different crime which requires a different response. True. As an example, take the situation of European Muslims, a group that has been systematically othered by governments and media for decades. Since 9-11, they have been routinely dehumanized, branded as terrorists or terrorist sympathizers. They are banned from wearing their veils in France, Austria, Belgium, Denmark, Bulgaria, and the Netherlands. Damn. In the UK, the Prevent Strategy Counterterrorism Program has placed an expectation on untrained citizens to out potential extremists to the state. This policy is so hawkish that it has resulted in children being detained by the state because their teachers mistook the Arabic writing on their clothes for ISIS symbols. Damn. Muslim girls face the common bullying routine of having their hijabs ripped off of them in schools. Hardly surprising when their biggest representative in the British media in the last decade was Shamima Begum. Boys are blamed for the most recent terror attack and assaulted by their peers for so much as having a Middle Eastern name. Jeez. On the week of 9-11, this also happened to me. Muslim men have been murdered on their doorsteps by far-right thugs after being falsely accused of grooming. Mosques are the frequent targets of arson attacks and vehicle rammings. All the while, conservative politicians will run entire campaigns on anti-Muslim messaging and describe the Islamic faith as a virus. Almost half of the Conservative Party sees Islam as a threat to the British way of life. They are encouraged to be discreet about their faith when seeking employment, and their overrepresentation in frontline services and deprived areas led to them having a significantly higher death rate during the pandemic. The Christchurch shooting, which took place in New Zealand, led to a 600% increase in hate crimes across the UK. Pundits like Tommy Robinson and Paul Joseph Watson barely waited a day before going back to pushing the same great replacement rhetoric that inspired the shooter a theory which has been the key talking point for the second largest party in France for over 10 years. Wow. This is a level of bigotry that suppresses a culture, destroys lives, and all too often gets innocent people killed. Does it, however, belong in the same category as what is happening to the Rohingya Muslims in Myanmar? No. One is discrimination and human rights violations, the other is genocide. Though they both stem from the same hatred, they are descriptively different and they warrant radically different responses. These are my views now, just as they were a couple of months ago before my first debate on the issue. Now, for the internet bullshit. Oh, ho, 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 ho. You guys can feel free to ban Ellen DeGeneres until after the stream if he's oh, being annoying. Oh, damn. Poly people. One ban. First of all, I am very aware that having this discussion at all is bound to be an optical loss for me. If I'm taking the position that what's happening is awful, but not as awful as genocide, it will inevitably look like what I'm doing is downplaying. This is especially the case when half of the audience has an interpretation oh, of genocide that is radically different from my own, oh my or from God, any that beautiful. I've ever observed in law, history, or common parlance. I accept this. What I absolutely do not accept are the following accusations. One that I was overly cruel to a scared trans person who was only asking for my empathy. Two, that I tried to bait her into breaking TOS so that she would lose her Twitch channel. Fed posting. And three, that I expressed some sussy baka opinions about the Holocaust. Ooh. Here are my issues with the first claim. In case some of you don't know, Polly People is, at least occasionally, a debate streamer. She has appeared on extremely combative debate panels with Christian conservatives, as well as the likes of Alex Stein and Sean Last. Pregnant, Polly, is it possible for a man to get pregnant? Yes. Oof. How? Is it with his penis will have a baby? A baby will come out of his pee hole? Trans dudes can get pregnant and trans dudes are dudes, my guy. I know you can't, you know, you don't like that, that reality, but it is reality because we are who we, Are you your brain or are you your dick? Right? You think, does your dick talk to you? I mean, maybe it does, but I get my Mine idea does. of who I am. And okay, well then, well then that's because you're kind of a freak. 
but like I know I am a freaky my brain freak. tells me so. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I can. You know, yeah, you got that vibe to you. Uh, but you know, I'm a me freak. on the me on the other hand, my brain tells me who I am, and so. Uh, do you still have it? Do you still have male? Do you still have a male penis? Ask your mom. So I just wanted to illustrate. <laughs> um, I could have probably got like fifty million Base. more clips of this, but like poly people is okay with very combative panels with people who are very, uh, <laughs> let's say, out there, pretty transphobic. Like Alex, we all know who Alex Stein is. I think this shapeshifter person is like a very famous um, right wing detransitioner. Sean Last is like, he's like the final boss of. Um, internet uh, race realism and great replacement stuff so you know probably not the most uh probably not the most friendly to trans people either anyway when she came into my chat i was already in the middle of a heated exchange with my community her input was not to ask for an empathetic discussion but to argue the specific case that there is an ongoing genocide in the united states throughout this debate she was not ambiguous about what she was there for uh oh she made it clear that what she wanted from the conversation was for me to at least call it a genocide. But I guess if it's a genocide, that action is insufficient then, is it? What, what, what should I do? What, what more should I do? Uh, you should at least be willing to call it a genocide. That's it, at least. If I don't call it a genocide, what? I'm insufficient? Well, you're, you, you, are, you, are, you are not accepting uh, uh, the truth of what's going on. Uh, True. Going on, sorry. Um, streamable is really annoying for not moving the clip properly, but okay. She even went so far as to say that my disagreement over the term genocide was an indication that I don't recognize the threat. Well, pay attention to the threat that she's talking about as well. The problem, but you're saying the problem with me is that I'm not calling it a genocide then. It goes both ways. If the only bar I'm not crossing is calling it a genocide, we're just talking like what? Well, I don't know. I'm just not using to your level of like you, to your fair. tone or what? To be fair. To be fair, I don't know much about your position on trans people, right? Okay. Right. right. I saw your last video, you know, and I had critiques about it, but 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 uh, um, you know, I I I didn't come away with the feeling like you didn't recognize the threat that exists to trans people until until well, I guess this very moment, and now it you know like you're you're sort of over reliance on um i'm not so sure like the need for people to start dying before you're willing to call something a gen or <laughs> can you imagine how cucked you have to be imagine you're like bro somebody got murdered yesterday and you're like well when you say murder isn't that kind of weird because that person's still alive and then you're like oh so you need to wait for people to start fucking dying before you call it murder you heartless fuck visibly dying in a way that you would recognize as opposed to just dying invisibly that's going on right now, a way that's going on right now. I can tell you very, I can tell you very clearly though. Going on, or an intended genocide. Yeah, I was thinking about the wrong clip, but yeah, like, it's like evidence that I don't <laughs> He wrong clipped himself, a dumbass. <laughs> After I had made my positions on anti-trans legislation clear, she once again said I should at least call out what was happening and followed up to say that the core transphobe wanted to eliminate trans people just like the Nazis did. So True. you're kind of getting the impression here is that the debate is about her trying to convince me to use certain language and use this is the same descriptions that she is, okay, so. Uh, real trans people don't talk about these ways in the ways that like, you know, uh, Vosh, for example, does, or the people that talk about, you know, self-defense with fucking arms, that's crazy. Like that is not gonna help us. Uh, it, the thing that will help us is if you at least call out what is happening right instead of like uh you, you know you know saying well it's not quite as bad as you think like just because there's some libs that like maybe fall prey to the idea that uh um you know there's there's like an over treatment of gender dysphoria right mm -hmm. uh doesn't mean that the core transphobe wants to uh, do nothing short of eliminate trans people however that happens just like Nazis did. Damn. They didn't necessarily need to cart every person off. Uh, they were happy with emigration, they, which will happen. Uh, people will at least move states. <laughs> Hold on. They were happy with emigration? Um, 
Um, I, also, I'm no longer saying my history is bad. I don't think my history is bad, actually. I think my history is better than 99% of these f losers. Um, I'm almost positive that Hitler made specific requests into other territories. F I'm trying to think of the country. Um, I don't think it was Yugoslavia. I don't remember what it was, but I know that he made specific requests into other territories saying, hey, Bulgaria, I think it might've been Bulgaria, where he's literally saying, you need to kill all of the Jewish people there. <laughs> the, the idea that he was okay with them emigrating is absolutely not true. Oh, maybe Hungary and Italy too? Yeah, uh, um, but I'm 99% I'm positive that Hitler made requests into other territories saying, you need to kill Jewish people in these territories as well. Um, the idea is like, okay, it's like, well, if you guys want to immigrate or emigrate, if you guys want to go somewhere else, you're fine. That is absolutely not true. What a wildly f stupid statement. Makes me, it makes me need a Red Bull. Hold on. Jesus Christ. The Wan Sea conference lasted only about 90 minutes. The enormous importance, which has been attached to the conference by post-war writers, was not evident to most of its participants at the time. Heydrich did not um, call the meeting to make fundamental new decisions on the Jewish question. Massive killings of Jews in the conquered territories of the Soviet Union and Poland were ongoing. A new extermination camp was under construction at Belzec at the time of the conference, and other extermination camps were in the early planning stage of the decision. To exterminate the Jews had already been made, and Heydrich, um, as Himmler's emissary, held a meeting to ensure the cooperation of the various departments in conducting the deportations. Um, <clears throat> the purpose of the conference called by the director of the Reich Security Main Office, SS, uh, imagine ever trying to pronounce any German fucking word that's just like seven other German words put together. Reinhard Heydrich was to ensure the cooperation of administrative leaders of various government de departments in the implementation of the final solution to the Jewish question, whereby most of the Jews of German-occupied Europe would be deported to occupied Poland and murdered. Conference participants included representatives from several government ministries, including state secretaries from the Foreign Office, just blah, 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 blah. Um, Heydrich outlined how European Jews would be rounded up and sent to extermination camps in the general government, the occupied part of Poland, where they would be killed. Um, anyway, yeah, I'm sorry. The, this idea that, like, Hitler would have been okay with Jews just leaving Germany was fucking ridiculous. I don't know why this person said that. Sorry, but there's just your minor random historical meme for the day. Happy with it. They didn't necessarily need to cart every person off. Uh, they were happy with emigration, They're, which will happen. Uh, people will at least move states, right? Because only certain states right now are genocidal. Uh, some states are not. Mm -hmm. So, you know, forcing people to move out, force, uh, making people's lives miserable such that they kill themselves. Uh, that's, that's all in the playbook. The, the, the core intent of these, these uh, laws is to kill or eliminate by by whatever means necessary trans people. There's uh, if you don't notice that there, that's a. Uh, they said this in chat as well. That's like a that's a Jewish trans person getting very irritated by the Holocaust comparisons. But yeah, that, if that's what we mean by at least call out what's happening, and that what's happening is that the core trans world is just like the Nazis and the um, the core intent of the policies is to kill try like yeah i mean if i don't yeah um like just for we'll get to it later but like the nazis in the 1920s openly very loudly said that they wanted to remove every jew from europe like hitler in mein kampf said that oh, if like man. at least if like 10 up. or 15000 jews died in the first world war um it would have been worth it it would have been worth the loss like so uh, it's a little uh, yeah oh sorry when she asserted that Republican legislators Read about the Madagascar plan. The extermination plans came after Nazi defeats in the war. Hitler did originally plan to forcibly remove the Jews to Madagascar. And then I, okay, I understand this, but I'm pretty sure the goal was always to kill all the Jews. It just started off less radical and became more radical as they, as time went on. But I'm pretty sure the goal would have always been to kill all of them. I don't think they would have been content just shipping them somewhere else. As we're trying to get trans people killed, I asked her if she had any examples. She seemed outraged that I asked the question at all. You're not going to be uh, frozen in fear if you really kind of like use the, the, you know, in my judgment would be the most correct words to describe what's going on in a way that people will hear and be like, oh, maybe I should look into this because, because uh, I'm not wrong in the way I describe it. I think that, that, uh, that, that, that proves out when you, 
when I, you know, it's not, we're, we're not just arguing about a word, it seems. It seems like we are arguing about what these anti-trans laws are really about and what they are intended to do. It seems like you're unwilling to accept that uh, uh, the laws are being passed because they don't, they are dehumanizing us and demonizing us in a way that you <laughs> that is necessary and sufficient create genocidal intent in a population jesus so you're saying it's not over a word but it is though we agree on what people should do to stop it we agree on how bad it is we agree on where it's happening yeah like it is just the word you don't think they're trying to kill trans people you, no, I don't think you they're... Told me wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Can you, okay, can you tell me which legislator is trying to kill trans people? Are there any specific ones? Any, uh -huh. how, any like, wait definite... Wait a second, are you telling me that the only way I can prove to you that there's a genocide is that if I find a find a legislator, hook him up to a lie detector, and the legislature <laughs> says, oh, I don't want to kill trans people, and it beats red, and then you'd be like, oh, because you found one, one legislator, and you proved beyond a reasonable doubt that person is, has genocidal intent, Amen. will you then agree it's a genocide? No, you wouldn't even do it then. You'd be like, well, that's just... So, I don't know, I feel like it's probably fair to ask that question. I wasn't asking for it again. Amen. Even when I tried to give her leeway here, citing Hitler as an example of how intent can be inferred, she moved off the point and asked me about my views on the Holocaust instead. So after <laughs> I've asked her which Republicans How do you feel about get, the Holocaust? Killed, she's kind of outraged that I asked the question, I give her leeway and show how you can infer intent. Then she just tries to move. I know on, you so. wouldn't even do it. Then you'd be like, "Well, that's just one." Well, I can say with, um, for example, there's. I, I don't know, there's there's like, no way there's, to wait, prove no, 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 to I can, you. Oh, wait, I can give you a lot of leeway here. Um, there's the because there was like these kind of discussions that they'll ask, like when it comes to uh, studying, like in law. Like, Find this person. I'll debate them. Bring me this person. Bring me them. Genocide. They'll say, um, "Can we see genocidal intent in Hitler before 1941?" And some people will say. Yes, because he's talking about removal by any means, even though there's no sign that he wants to kill people. It's like, well, if you want to remove millions and millions of people, how else are you going to do that apart well, from killing them? So that's so I'm bringing up because she brought up like she was the first person to bring up Nazis in this as well. I'll have the links uh, after in the video description. Um, yeah, she brings up Nazis like quite a lot. So I just thought I'll just give her that example to show like you can show intent without it being explicit. So I'm just trying to give her leeway here to the original question. But I think instead she tries to move on to like this different. It's just really weird. That's why they would say there. But that's how no. That's how you would say. That's how you would say. That's how you would say that there was warnings of genocide. There was plenty of it. I say that I would say there was. I would say you couldn't say. What? Well, of course. What did I just say? Wait, wait. What did I just say? Okay, so what I think you said is that Hitler had genocidal intent before. Wait. When, when would you say the ge, uh, when would you say the genocide of the Jews actually happened or, or started? No, no, wait. That's not the, the question. Is whether or not the intent when the intent showed, right? So I'm trying to keep her on topic here, but and well, now I'm interested in your answer to my question. Well, uh -oh. the signs of the intent were there from like 1919 uh -oh. when Hitler wrote that thing about yeah, yeah. But when war. would you say? Uh oh. When would you say, according to you? Yeah, we'll come according back to, to the you. Holocaust stuff a bit later, but um, according to you, I think the impression here is just that like people Dummy. were saying I was being really cruel to this person, or I was being really bombastic or debate bro. Like I don't know, I felt like I was letting her go off quite a, a bit, and I was letting her kind of take me into all these different directions in the debate and like steering off topic and stuff like that. Like I don't know. Um, I think there were maybe a couple of points where I got slightly irritated, but for the most part, like I feel like the debate tactics are more coming from her end as well. But, um, more than mine, but anyway. Um, all right. Near the end of the debate, she seemed to be arguing that any form of systemic discrimination which gets people killed should count as a genocide. If you were on the ground in... This clip's quite long, so I'm going to use it a few times, but we'll just move to here. ...and done in the way that you would specifically call a genocide yes that's why that's why we have a definition of genocide yeah if they're dying if people die because of if people it's die because of systemic discrimination that's not genocide no it, how is that not genocide then if people die as a result of systemic discrimination okay can we oh, wait, 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 can we just okay can you just admit to me right can you just wait, i've got i leave the clips quite big just for context but yeah that's at that point i'm just um were these people considered jim crow black genocide know. yes i think 
They would. You could probably argue Everything that is. all systemic discrimination yes, is against genocide. minorities gets them killed in one way or another, but we'll get to that. It seemed apparent that what Polly wanted was for me to accept her claims without providing any explanation for them. By asking her a couple of questions that she didn't have an answer to, I was doing it wrong. This is because Polly is not someone who is just afraid and looking for empathy from other streamers. She is someone who believes that people on the left should agree with her positions on trans issues uncritically. She is very open about this on her streams where she explicitly said, whilst reflecting on our debate, that you don't have to understand, you can just believe what we're telling you. Based. We don't need empathy. Yeah, I mean, well, we don't, <laughs> we need people to fight for us and believe us. Like, you don't have to understand it. You, you don't have to, like, what a like dog shit mentality. The fucking requirement <laughs> that somehow we have to make you understand, that's, that's not, that's not good. Like, that's bad thinking. You know, if you're pro trans people and, uh, you know, you have somebody like me, uh, you know, explain to you why there's a trans genocide, you have, a, you get an un, unexpected backlash from your take. The correct thing is to just assume you don't, you know, if you don't understand, uh, uh, it's, you know, that's not on us. That's on you. And you don't have to understand. You can just, you can just believe what we're telling you. She streamed about me for about five or six days after this debate. There was quite a lot to go through, but I don't want to drown in sources, right? You might think I'm being hyperbolic when I describe her as a puritanical ideologue. But she wouldn't. Right? But they don't like me for some reason. I'm sort of the odd one out on the target list, right? Because I'm, I am, I'm like by all respects, like a, like a, like a, like a pure, puritanical, like, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, ideologue, right? You would say, you would say that certainly, right? So like, you know, to have an attack on me from the left, it's got to be personal as opposed to ideological. Right. Thanks, Stardust's response to that to that is quite funny. Right. So, like, you know, to have an attack on me, right? You would say, you would say that certainly, right? So, like, you know, to have an attack on me from the left. <laughs> okay. Um, well, by the way, doing? if you are if you want to be like a puritanical ideologue, I think that's fine. That's that's cool. You know, I like having. It's good to have variety in the Twitch space. We're we're like a you know. That's where we. This is where you get like the more weird political commentary. That's cool. The problem is, is that being like that but then people trying to frame you as something completely different to that is just weird but you'll notice that um a lot of these complaints that were made about my debate with polly didn't actually come from polly we'll get to that though Ooh. she believes that any pushback on her claims about genocide is a form of tone policing that's another one the, one of the things people are saying uh is that people like me who say there's a trans genocide out there uh should not do that um, because it's not just about whether or not there's a genocide. They'll say, like, this is about a word, right? Are you using the word properly? And, you know, where I come from, we have a, we have a, we have a saying for that. It's, it's tone police. <laughs> so, like, the debate seems to be is should we tone police trans people? And people aren't picking up that I'm trying to, like, say, look, you shouldn't have panels on this because it's essentially a question of should we tone police trans people? So we don't believe, yeah. So we shouldn't have panels on this, although she's happy to have debates about it. Um, so I think I, in the debate, there's a spot where I even asked if the whole point of it was just for rhetorical flourish. Um, she said no, though. She said it was descriptively true. I don't really know how that would count as tone pleasing. I'm pretty sure tone pleasing is when you like have a go at like a black woman for being aggressive or like a or uppity or something like that like it's more oh, yeah, it's about tone, what did not he about just say a disagreement on an issue but yeah. of course arguing that someone is using a term incorrectly is not anywhere near the same as tone policing especially when you are the one implying that others shouldn't be publicly voicing those disagreements in her own words real allies don't quibble with the definition this is a tweet Real allies don't quibble with the definition. All right. um, if this is the case, I am led to wonder, why would she come on my stream to debate the topic of genocide if the only correct response I can give is to agree without challenging her? Of course, Polly is not the representative of all trans people, nor is the group of trans people she surrounds herself with online. This makes it especially inconvenient for her when she faces disagreement from other trans people. 
When Vivian Wolf challenged the idea that I pulled out of a conversation with President Sunday because I was afraid, Polly almost sparked an argument with this over, Vi over this with Viv before Viv had even watched the debate. Well done, Dollar Book, reading. Um, pretty sure it's not because he was afraid. Uh, Lorna Box is not as well versed on genocide as he tries to appear. He may have felt unprepared. Um, it's not my experience. He's a non person. Getting the person. big uh, shit on seen by the discussion. Oh, so no. She says she hasn't seen the discussion. Polly says, yo, are you saying I'm wrong here? I'm not. I mean, I think Viv went on a stream later and, and spoke about how um, she almost got like into a fight with Polly over this like thing here, but... Even though I think Viv actually came out against me after this anyway, so, you know, just... One more example. Lexibat is another trans streamer who argues against using the word, but only for tactical reasons. As he was trying to explain his position whilst reviewing our debate, Polly was typing in Lexibat's chat saying, call it what it is, and Jesus Christ just say genocide. Yeah. This clip's a little bit long, but... Murder or suicide, mass suicide caused by policy. Mass That's suicide. what a democide is. I would use that instead, personally. There are other definitions, Polly, yes. So you can see oh, the chat here is really difficult to see, but in the side here... Oh, self-inflicted genocide. In the side here, she's saying, um, this is when she came in, call it what it is, uh, Jesus Christ, just say genocide, just as Lexi Bat's explaining his position. Like. Yes. But the problem is, most people don't know the other definitions. Your average Joe on the street doesn't know the other definitions. Like, at all. Fuck. Like... We're not as smart. I am also trans, Polly. I am also terrified by all of this, right? I am also at risk. But at the end of the day... It's a tactics debate. That's what we're having, right? We're having a tactics argument. Do we use an emotive word that causes people who don't know any better to book, or do we use or a term that is at least technically more accurate, even if it is by all intents and purposes, as I said, a genocide, right? Do we make people book, or do we say, this is a thing, this is what it means, this is why this is that, and is leading to genocide? That is the biggest pile of horse shit I've ever heard in my life, 255. My daughter was using non-binary pronouns for me when she was four. <laughs> Wait. Also. For herself or for her? For the mom or? They, them is not a neo pronoun. Fuck off. 255. My daughter was using non-binary pronouns for me when she was four. I think non-binary pronouns for me, I think, is what. Also, they, them saying. is not a neo pronoun. Fuck off. Yeah, like, the, at the end of the day, this is like a a tactics conversation more than it is a terminology one. Because you're right. It is. I think this is better. But. Well, no, this is better. Legally, like, on the world court. I think this is what Bolly said to set Alex off. Okay, this is nuts. I don't get your take Because it's really. broken and the definition is nonsense. It doesn't work. And if anyone is going to fucking refer to it as a genocide if anyone does know the definition of genocide it'll be the UN definition they know that's because you're not cunting listening Polly for fuck's sake you're hearing the shit you want to hear or the shit you think I'm saying and you're not listening to what I'm actually cunting saying try open your f***ing ears oh Jesus my seven year old can listen better than this oh my take is yeah amongst us it's a f***ing genocide but when you are talking to people who don't fucking know any better you cannot use the word genocide because they have been taught to be fucking balking at us oh they have been taught to not pay attention and to tune that shit out Zeus, they have been taught true. that that word means something very different than what it actually fucking means because the legal definition by the un is bollocks and useless useless yeah alexi bad male pronouns yeah Loner box here is arguing from a stance of exclusively the UN definition. Dumb fuck. You are using prescriptive language. He was using descriptive language. Well, no, but... It's not fucking hard to understand. Oof. No, because you don't get to come into my chat and fucking talk to me like that. Oof. You just don't get to. You can ask questions and you can listen and you can actually pay attention to what I'm fucking saying. 
You cannot come in here and put fucking words in my mouth. Damn. And just purposefully hang on to your damn ignorance because you're too damn prideful to let it go and listen to somebody else. You want to be that prideful, that's up to you. It's not my cunting problem. Is but cunting the the really, day, does that work that way as a word? You are not the only trans person in existence and you are not the only person scared and you are not the only person at risk. And you are not the only person who has ideas of tactics and how to deal with things. God damn. This is why the fucking left eats itself. Because people like you are incapable of listening to other cunting people. Oh, murder. Oh. I like that guy. He's cool. All right. Whoa, that what? Ooh. The second claim. TOS baiting, brackets, Fed posting. During this debate, I allegedly tried to manipulate Polly into saying something that would break oh, the Twitch man. terms of service. This allegation would suggest that my intention during this debate was to get this person, who I'd never met before, to lose her channel. I find this accusation especially strange because it certainly doesn't speak to any pattern of behavior on my part. My views on deplatforming are generally more permissive than those of most leftists I associate with, and I don't typically celebrate when other people get banned. If I was trying to get Polly banned, it would be very out of character for me, and I would imagine the burden of proof for such an allegation would be fairly high. Here are the two instances that are referred to. I'll just read all of this and then we'll watch it. In the first, I asked the question, if you think it's a genocide, why aren't you trying to get legislators killed? The purpose of me asking this question was to illustrate the difference between discrimination and genocide. We justify the acts of the Jewish partisans and Rohingya rebels because the regimes they were and are fighting are genocidal. They're in a position where besides fleeing, that is their only recourse. It's a descriptively different problem with different prescriptive solutions. So, legislators do this because they want to kill the trans people. Then the way you respond to that is, well, what would you do? What would you do if the Nazis took power? You wouldn't oppose like Jewish militias trying to assassinate Nazi politicians, right? So. I don't know, like, if you're calling it a genocide, then why are you not trying to get legislators killed? In self-defense. Um, well, I'm not, you know, I would never talk about that. Uh, so, when someone answers that question with, I would never talk about that, that means it they kind want of to. sounds like, oh yeah, again, I could have been wrong. Oh um, no, it, it is. It kind of sounds like they're saying, they would. Yes, yeah. that's just my first reading of it. Oh no, and you're absolutely right. My response right. to it was just to, again, just engage with it because obviously I think that's a really stupid thing to advocate for. Like she could just reject the premise if she doesn't like it, but we'll see. You wouldn't you know, talk about that, it, but yeah. you, okay. Well, 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 I wouldn't do any, I would personally not do anything like that. Like yeah, that's just, If I was feeling mean here, if I was talking to like a right winger, I would probably keep asking the question. But I'm just accepting her answer and just assuming it means what I think it means and then going off with it. So you can say But other people to right. fuck up their own lives that's, and go to jail and just like ruin everything just because and actually probably fuck the movement even more. But that's the logical conclusion, right? If someone is has genocidal intent and is trying to action it gradually, they are uh, fair game, right? So I think you are you are uh, uh you're 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 now you're being unfair. Uh, you're you're painting me as somebody who is now trying. God, you're doing the thing. You're saying now I'm the murderer. Oh, trying to get, because I am calling something what it is. You're now saying that I'm trying to get people killed in the name of trans people. That's fucking ridiculous, my guy. I am just trying to get you to to use a word that accepts the 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 Fuck. very risk uh, to people like me that is out there right now there is legislation again i'm trying to get you to use a word but legislation being being proposed there is legislation being passed there are children being taken away from their parents in the state of texas because they are they are treating their kids for who they are and you you're saying if i call just curious has this actually happened in texas yet are children actually being taken away or is this something that they're still talking about and it's not actually like implemented yet call it a genocide i am therefore uh, required to what now go out and kill people uh, that are trying to kill me like like I don't understand oh my god if that's your standard then I guess uh, there will never be a genocide because you know I'm always going to be too afraid uh, to fight back against you know the, the the powers that be that are trying to get me I would yes what if somebody like me would rather run and hide uh, you know in in a fucking attic somewhere does that make it not a genocide because other people are going to fight for me instead so where do we so i so wait so I, i'm going to assume you're saying then so you don't want to be 
pigeonholed into the person who wants to kill legislators. I'm just, you know, I asked you a question. No. You're saying no. no okay, I, okay. You, you asked me a question. Dude. You asked me a question. That's fine. You said no, okay. Personally, um, so, I mean, if you think that's me trying to get someone banned. Um, it is. Okay. Um, so that's the first time. The second time I bring it up, is to argue about the effect her rhetoric might have on her audience instead. So I've, I've, I've accepted her answer at this point. I've accepted that she doesn't want to advocate for anything herself, um, even though the initial answer was a bit odd, but whatever. I'll take people at their word. Um, this is the second time. And the problem is, the reason I have a problem with the word genocide again is because when you use that language and you look at the way historically genocides have been responded to and the way that genocides are handled, and the best way to handle genocides is that you've got people in your audiences who are very like vulnerable and are very like scared enough, are very scared as it is. And when you say these people want to kill you, then you are kind of quietly saying, if someone wants to kill you, um, the things that you should do in self-defense are things that you're it's not wrong. willing to say they should it's do. Wrong. So she's already started saying run here. Again, that's an opportunity for her to say, no, I'm not up for violence. I'm just, I would rather run. So you can just reject what I'm saying. Instead, uh, she says this. No, well, okay, well, one, I don't want to violate terms of service, right? People people who want to defend themselves- Well, there themselves, you go, though. You just say you don't want to violate terms of service, though, so we know what you are okay with, right? No, 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 no. I do not want to violate, no, no. Uh, look, <laughs> I'm not okay look, with violating TOS. Please do not push me to this direction. I told you my personal story. I think I talk to trans people all the time. Many of us are figuring out where the fuck we're going to run to. If she disagreed with my framing, all she needed to do was reject my premise. Instead, she said, I don't want to violate terms of service. When I responded by saying, we know what you are okay with, I deliberately spoke indirectly precisely to avoid TOS violations. If she had said yes to this question, she, she would have been able to voice that opinion and it wouldn't have broken TOS. When she answered with no and asked me not to push her in that direction, I accepted her answer and we moved on. The question of political violence never came up again. Th those two clips are me apparently for no, for some unspecified reason, just randomly trying to get a trans streamer banned. Those two questions. Now, that's what I heard. If you talk about genocide, I think genocide typically, at least in every historical example I can think of, Every genocide I can think of in history, the people who were victims had every moral right to basically use whatever means they could to um, stop the perpetrators. I don't think there's any example of a genocide where you would say that's not okay. So I think you kind of have, like, I think it's perfectly fair to bring up that question. Um, if you want to advocate for, give your, or give your positions for political violence, you know, you can use euphemisms or you can uh, do indirect, in indirect ways the same like I tried to do here just to at least see if she had a position worth engaging with. But again, like if I, if I say it's, you're implying like violent action against the legislators and she says, I don't want to break TOS. Like, to me, that sounds like a yes. But again, when she said no and don't push me, I just let her, I just left her, I just left it to go into the next topic. Like, so I don't know if you think, if like, if, if you think that's me trying to get someone banned, um, yeah, you do you, it's okay. All right. It would, be, it would be worth asking here, if the only point in me bringing up political violence was for TOS bait, why did I also mention it before the call? I don't know. I don't know what it would look like for trans people. I think, I think no, actually I do. I think what you could call a cultural genocide of trans people, and I think this is the only, and I'm saying like a less than 1% chance, but the only chance I think of that happening is uh, like, states start to sanction some kind of like forced conversion therapy for trans kids like they'll say that there's a big there's a there's a crisis of like a mental health crisis of trans kids and we need to save them by uh finding trans kids and bringing them to conversion therapy camps so that they can like uh they can you know purge their fucking demons or get rid of the social contagion or whatever i think that would be i'd be like fuck you know that would be yeah that would be a cultural genocide yeah and if people wanted to take out, like we're taking up arms to f standing in front of the, like the front doors of trans kids to protect them from that behavior, I'd be like, yeah, but of course I wouldn't oppose that. You, you, they would, it's like the only chance they've got, right? 
Um, I know some people are thinking about Texas. Don't worry. We'll talk about Texas. Okay. Um, furthermore, why did I willingly stake my own positions on political violence, which were very close to being TOS violations? I think this is probably, of this entire debate, the closest anyone came to breaking TOS was actually me, but... Okay. So, Ooh, okay. when it comes to domestically, the difference is, is that I, like, I, I feel like I'm more radical than you now. I think if there's a genocide happening, hold on, hold on. you should fucking, like, video game okay. the people who are doing the genocide. Hold on, hold on. So, so yeah, yeah. President Sunday, among others, seemed uh -oh. convinced that my only intention with these questions was to get Polly to lose her channel. What's interesting to me is that this complaint, as far as I know, was never made to me by Polly herself. But we'll return to that later. Okay, let's go for this bit first. This is Doe. She didn't commit the violation. She rejected it multiple times. She said, no, I don't want to fight anyone. I want to run away. And he pressed her repeatedly. It was a disingenuous TOS pay. If you think, if you're starting to think this might be a little bit um, misrepresentative of the clips we just watched, um, there might be a common theme there, okay? I'm going to say this is not an accurate representation of what we just watched. Right. Uh, Sunday? President Sunday being bad for Might as well read this whole thread. No. Uh, Lorna Box is now using a soundbite of me saying you laughed in the face of your last interlocutor on this issue in reference to his conversation with Polly, where he tried to bait her into a TOS violation and ridiculed her as a notification sound on stream. This is actually so dumb. If your belief is a TOS violation, why is that anyone's fault but yours or the platform? If I had an argument with someone who told me words don't mean anything, and then they got banned because they said the N-word with a hard R, not my fault. Hey! So I had, sorry. No one's belief for TOS violations. That's not what people are upset about. Please refrain from engaging until you've caught up with that minimum, the initial debate that sparked this all. Wow. Doe, I've watched the debate. I agree with Lorna's position. I know Polly didn't violate TOS. She answered the line of questions where oh, they were cherry. going and very strongly said In she the wasn't calling for violence. Villainizing a clear ally for asking reasonable questions for a serious topic is cruel. And this is Sunday. Don't play dumb. He framed his questions to get her to assume his premise that determined implied retaliatory violence as a given so she'd be breaking TOS even by answering. That she had the wherewithal to avoid this isn't a defense of what Lonerbox was transparently trying to do. She's a fucking adult engaging a debate. If you want to cry the loner box didn't go easy on her, say that with your chest. You and everyone alongside you are fucking disgusting for stoking these flames. There's plenty of real transphobia in the world, you bored fucking losers. Um, Damn! Thanks, Jerry. Damn! Uh, okay. I imagine people might have been a little primed to assume that the reason for asking this question is to fed post because of this debate between Vosh and Rose Rist, where Rose asked the question, if it were possible to kill Republican lawmakers with no consequences, would it then be justified? Um, if you could, if it were to be possible to get away with, um, yeah, killing Republican lawmakers with no consequences, uh, would it then be? Are you at, be wait? Are you actually Fed posting at me right now? You're glowing in this convo. Wait, are you being fed these questions? So you'll notice there that. Yeah, sorry, I misspoke yesterday, guys, and I said that maybe they're just not letting some people back on Twitter at all who've gotten, like, certain convictions, you know? But then we see a good friend of the stream, Baked Alaska, is, uh... Baked Alaska is indeed back on Twitter, so not really sure what, uh, not, no clue. Uh, any day now, guys, I'm sure we're getting unbanned. I'm sure it's coming, we're just, they're working their way through that list or something. I should have stormed the Capitol, true. The Daily Stormer founder was unbanned. <laughs> Wait, really? When was this guy banned initially? Oh my god, this guy's tweeting up a storm. You already saw this guy's unbanned? Oh wait, was that Andrew Anglin? Oh yeah, oh I didn't know this guy was the founder of the Daily Stormer. Oh, I didn't know that. Right. <clears throat> Their rose said no consequences. The question's a little bit different, but yeah. It's likely the well might be a little poisoned around this issue because we now know that this question was sent to Rose by Destiny. I've been up given permission to share these, so. Um Oh dear. Maybe chat can go off for a minute. This is Destiny. Ask him this. If it did work out, if they were able to kill lawmakers with no consequences, would it be morally justified? Um, we'll ask. So you can see there, that's when the this uh line of messaging starts. Okay, that's really important. Interestingly enough, this was actually a follow-up question. 
The first time Rose asked this, albeit with the no consequences part, Vosh had no problem answering, and he also said he didn't feel like the question was TOS bait. Now this question, you'll notice, is a bit more similar to my one, right? Okay. So then if you believe that the Republicans have intent right now to 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 bring about an LGBT genocide, uh, how can you morally object against people right now taking up arms and going out and killing Republican lawmakers? Uh, Republican lawmakers? Yes. Uh, well, it would be a utilitarian thing, wouldn't it? It would be if you could get better political <laughs> I love outcomes when he does the utilitarian so, thing. Which, unfortunately, That's my favorite I don't Bosch really man. think it's possible to know that because I'm not God. But as a general rule, that type of thing doesn't... Okay. Uh, he said that type of thing doesn't work out as a general rule. Good answer, Vouch. Um, didn't feel like the question was TOS, but... Do you feel like any of the, the questions I'm asking you are being asked in, in bad faith and I'm trying to bait you into like violating TOS or anything? No. Did I imply that? Okay. Uh, no, maybe I, I misunderstood. Do you feel like... Didn't Vosh yeah. later say he was fed posting? So that first though? question to Vosh was fine. Um, I remember. Contrary to popular opinion, this initial question did not originally come from Destiny. Let's just go popular opinion. What? That is a... That was like one of the dirtiest approaches I've seen. That is very much, uh, that is a, that is a, uh... God, I hate this Harry Potter looking ass fucking haircut. Yeah, that's characteristic me. of another streamer who who engages in bullshit like this against trans people. Okay, I don't know if it, this needs to be said or if I have to explain the line of questioning. Okay, because it seems like these people have so much trouble understanding where, where this line of questioning comes from. If you say there is an ongoing genocide then the solution is to kill the genociders. That's a super easy, really basic line of thought to follow, right? The reason why we get so upset about people talking about um, uh, like um, the Great Replacement or people talking about how like we have to, you know, take up arms against the government or the election. Stolen from, the reason why that's bad is because it leads to only violence. It's the only remedy is you have to get violent, right? That's the reason why that's bad, but why you push people away from that rhetoric. So when you're out here saying there's a genocide, there's a genocide, there's a genocide, there's a genocide, and it's like, okay, well, what do we do when there's a genocide? Um, um, it is absolutely ridiculous that you would ask me that question. Uh, like, I mean, that's the reason why people are, are pushing that line of thought. Yes, it's literally what Rose Wrist was trying to do to Vosh. I don't think Vosh. that there's any surprise that both Rose Wrist and Loner Box borrowed directly from the playbook of fucking Stinky Steve. Okay. Contrary to popular belief, that original question, the same one I asked to Polly, actually came from a question I sent to Rose Wrist a week earlier when he was debating Nick Fuentes. Damn. So this is my DMs to Rose Wrist, 23rd of May. If you think they're trying to genocide you, isn't it right to kill them? Because if the answer is no, they're a bunch of cucks, Lamau. Obviously, I didn't use this one on a trans person because that's, you know, we, we treat people differently. Okay. <laughs> you can't call um, a trans person a cuck? You can see here the debate with Fuentes. Um, where's the date? May 23rd, 2022. The Vosh debate was a week later, May 29th. This isn't a very exciting thing. I just thought you guys might want to know a bit more. Like, I, I'm excited. <laughs> I have my own thoughts, believe it or not. That was my question. And my question, when Vosh was asked it, said he didn't feel like it was a TOS violation. The different question that Destiny asked was, if there were no consequences, would it then be okay to kill Republican lawmakers? And actually, just as a slight critique to Vosh, um, I don't think that's a very, I feel like he already answered that question because he said as a general rule, that thing doesn't work out. I would like to imagine if you're like a rule utilitarian, um, if you're a rule utilitarian, I'd probably say that if you're living, as long as you live in a democracy, you probably don't ever want it to be the case that people are out killing Republican lawmakers or any lawmaker. Probably just a rule people should avoid as long as you, there's like other forms of recourse in a democracy. Now, if you get into more authoritarian environments, well, the answer might get a little bit more pepe, but hmm. pepe. that's how I'd answer that anyway. I don't think it was a very difficult question. If people believe that my reason for bringing up violent action was to bait Polly into... 
It's more about creating a political movement that collectively wants to kill fascists as opposed to vigilantism, i.e. individuals who do it on their own, not the same thing. Wrong! The problem there is you have a variable, fascists, that can stand for literally fucking anything, right? Because in your world, well, we only kill fascists. Well, who are fascists? Every single person that voted for Donald Trump. Every single person that supports the cops. Every single person that likes a Ben Shapiro tweet. Like, that's the issue with that line of thought. Breaking TOS, they would also have to answer this. Why did I also discuss violent action on my stream before Polly came on? Could it not be that this was simply one of my arguments? Should I have refrained from making this point just on the off chance that Polly does have views that would break TOS and that she isn't clever enough to conceal them? I'm going to be quite blunt here to close this bit. Um, TOS bait isn't a real thing. It's not. If you don't want to answer a question that sounds like it might, because your answer might be TOS or you're not imaginative of, imaginative enough to come up with a euphemism or something that's probably like if if you'd answer a question like the one i asked and just unwittingly break tos that's probably your own fault like I, I, I wouldn't expect anyone i'm talking to to ever be that stupid but okay the second poly debate on november 1st poly unexpectedly appeared in my chat and asked for a second conversation this one was far less combative than the first she didn't say anything about me being cruel to her in our previous talk nor did she bring up the issue of TOS baiting. Instead, the conversation was fairly cordial and we were a lot more understanding of each other's positions. I was a bit skeptical about her reading of the 10 stages of genocide, but I could see where she was coming from. What confuses me is that she made a couple of concessions in this talk that she seems to have already gone back on. I suggested this was something we could agree to disagree on and she seemed happy with that. She even tiled her video on Twitch, I think this goes better. Uh, I think this goes better. Discussion two. Better. God, I hate his fucking the British question. ass. Fucking yee yeah, ass so accent. I don't know if this counts as like a disagree, agree to better. disagree on some things, but fucking loser. Everything. It's all right. So. I mean, I mean, I mean, hey, I appreciate you talk. Yeah. Okay. I asked her if people who disagree with using the word genocide belong in the same box as genocide deniers, to which she said, no, they don't. Do you think it's fair to say people who don't agree that there's a genocide happening right now are should belong in the same box as genocide deniers? No, 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 okay. I wouldn't say that. I I would say no. No, no, I I would say that because that carries an implication of like Holocaust denial and shit. Do you why she has since continued to attack me on Twitter and call me Denial Box. I can't really say. <laughs> denial Box. Because <laughs> he's been denied denial everybody's box. box. Coping he's a virgin. Of our president <laughs> come day. Well, I mean, I can't even really get upset about this. Just kind of funny. But okay. <laughs> Just to reiterate one more time. The first two accusations made against me didn't actually come from Polly. I was probably going to get a few more clips about Polly because she streamed a lot of weird shit about me later on. Um, but I don't really like clipping people if I don't know that much about them and I don't want to misrepresent them like they've had like a weird moment on stream or whatever. Um, so I just thought I'd leave it with, at that. I feel like when it comes to Polly, she's quite good at falling out with people by herself. So Damn. Yeah, as far as I know, I thought me and her seemed to be on okay terms since the last talk. I saw people go showing head blood on hands? Jesus. Demon. Mama. <laughs> I'm sorry. I couldn't, um, I tried to react. Demon Mama reacted to my debate with Polly a couple of days afterwards. I tried watching it a few times, but I just get like really distracted by some of her mannerisms. So, um, yeah, okay. In her response to my debate with Polly, Demon Mama has a habit of pulling the strangest faces even when what I'm saying is completely uncontroversial. This is just, I couldn't, wait. <laughs> Uh-oh. All right, let's continue. Later after it's over, but, but that's not what, that's not what we need. Okay, first of all, when, okay, when camps were opening, yeah, you could, there was plenty of evidence to say that we're building up to a genocide and the urgency was there. Like, again, I, I, I just so they, you know, for my take on Germany, camps? I think the Allies should have intervened when the first camp, when the first camp opened before the annexation. So, no, yeah, actually, I'm very for intervening as quickly as possible when that happens. I think that every government in the Allied what? States were too slow, okay? So, no. I don't know why you think just because... She's like... I'm, 
contesting you on terminology means you think I'm less urgent about stopping the problem. I don't know like, why I don't, you think that. I'm giving an argument that's like anti-appeasement. I don't know why she's... And there's another one here. Um, Side, at least. Yeah, because I can tell you very clearly why I have a problem. And it's All because right. the way you respond to these things are different. If a state is committing genocide, say, for example, this, was, this is what justifies countries invading other countries. This is what justifies countries bombing other countries. This is the justification that was given in Libya. They said that Gaddafi was going to, he had genocidal intent. He was announced that he was going to genocide his own people. And then the, like, I think at this point, the whole idea of genocide being an international crime that's supposed to be enforced by the international community, like that's what it was for. Like both definitions were intended for that, and it's just like, this was this is what justifies countries invading other countries. This is what justifies countries just bombing a other countries. Bit shocked, but yeah, I don't know. We're gonna see a lot of that, and there's also um, yeah, you're gonna see a bit of a common trend with those faces. All right, throughout this video, Demon Mama consistently scoffs every time I bring up the idea of activists pushing against anti-trans laws at a state level. When I talk about recommending activist groups to people who want to get involved in stopping legislation, she seems unimpressed. If anyone uh, wants to engage in activism, if that's their thing, because there's lots of people who come to me like, you know, I want to get involved, I'll probably say like, well, Stonewall, really good organization to volunteer for, uh, Mermaids, all these organizations want volunteers. A lot of them are involved in fighting the legislation, uh, you know, going into... I don't know how it works over there, but the way it comes is like with councils, you can lobby and you can write. If anyone will shake of the head there, um, let's see. She pulls another face when I talk about people lobbying against legislation in ways that are actionable within a liberal democracy. Research. Well, the way you respond to that is the way I think I advocate for is people getting involved in uh, pressure groups and political and charities and uh, lobbying and going to meetings and uh, lobbying MPs, protesting civil like, yeah, things that you can do within a liberal democracy, like things that are just like actionable. If you think there it is, the legislators do this <laughs> because they want to research. Well, okay. the way you um, interestingly, she takes. Interestingly, she shakes her head at me advocating for activism within the law, even though Polly agrees with me immediately afterwards. If we're talking about, I guess you'd imagine we, the way to oppose this would be uh, lobby legislators, turn up to town hall meetings, I guess, in America, uh, help with... Uh, Do everything groups, you can within okay. the law, as many people did within the hmm. law uh, during previous genocidal events. If we're I don't really know how many genocidal events in the past were fought by acting within the law, but we'll see. All right. At least domestically. All right. In response to a chatter, she continues to mock the idea of political lobbying by doing a caricature of someone writing a letter to their genocidal congressman. Truth of what's letter. going on. Hey, again, everybody. Have you considered writing a letter to oppose the law that will ban you from getting health care? Have you considered writing a letter? Truth of what's going on. I think if you were, I think if you were contacting a legislator, you would probably contact the Democrat legislator who's opposing the bill. Um, or I don't know how it is in the U.S., but I'm pretty sure legislators work in public buildings. Like you can just go there and speak to them. But all right. um, or I think there are, are there not states in America where you can just testify against any bill or for or against. You can testify towards any bill that's passing. Um, anyway. This dismissive attitude makes me wonder, is Demon Mama completely unaware of the impact that legal and political activist groups have had in stopping anti-trans legislation? Yep. Um, a lot of people, I don't know, I feel like this is quite well known. This was uh, 2021 talking about bills restricting gender affirming care for trans youth. There are two here that uh, were enacted. Look at the, all the other ones that failed. And these are mostly in Republican majority states. And it's been like this this year as well. The vast majority of these bills are being po pushed through Republican states and they're failing. And the reason they're failing is because activist groups turn up and testify against them and pressure to stop them. It's like, I don't understand, like, because I feel like, isn't that one, um, isn't that like a criticism we normally make of politicians is that they're careerists. They don't really care that much about uh, ideology, they don't really have that much conviction, they just do what they're pressured to. Um, like, yeah, there are loads of stories about this as well. There's like, there was a bill in, I think it was Ohio that didn't go through because a Republican majority board flipped their votes after hearing testimony from trans- This must be scripted, no shot. Yeah. 
guys looking for any gaming products? Game pearls, keyboard, mouse, whatever? We got good deals today. Hey, have a good day. Are you guys looking for any gaming products? Friends out to this. Like, the amount, like, people can go and turn up and say, like, um, you know, I'm trans, this is how this legislation will affect me. And a lot of the time, a lot of the Republican legislators uh, involved uh, in those votes have probably never seen a trans person before. Like, like that, it does, it does actually impact the laws even in red majority states. So, yeah. Or, is this the kind of action you would be inclined to ignore if you believed Republicans were legislating because they want you dead? Not wanting to jump to conclusions about this, I looked at Demon Mama's stream on trans genocide, which does have a segment entitled, What Can Be Done? Here's the segment. Um, Tell us what can be done. DM. You see there, what can be done? It's like a four or five minute segment after she made her case for the trans genocide ongoing. It's just... Um, I do want to spend a little bit of time right now talking about what could be done. This is not going to be a part of the formal video because I don't. I want the video to be very pinpointed and focused in its in its goal. But um, I, I want people to realize there's a lot that can be done to resist this sort of thing. Uh oh. Um, I don't know why I bother clipping that. Oh. I've noticed when watching Demon Mama's debates that every time she says there's a lot that can be done, she usually only mentions like one or two things at most. But uh, based. Um, after saying there are a lot of things that can be done, she gives two examples. One, connect with other trans people online and offline. Oh, okay. All good. Uh, two, a vague allusion to mutual aid with this example before I she- I hate it when people bring up mutual aid and never talk about it. People think mutual aid is just fucking donation drives. People have no idea what the fuck mutual aid even is. You should just never be allowed to say mutual aid if you're an online socialist. You don't know what it is, you've never engaged in before, you don't- you can't explain anything about it. Like, just shut the fuck up. She goes on to talk about helping with fundraisers for people who are trying to leave states like Florida. Yeah, this was a bit weird. I don't really know what she's getting nice. at here. Uh, the mutual aid aspect is going to be incredibly, incredibly important. And it should not be un understated how much uh, simple acts of mutual aid. Mutual aid? What is mutual aid? Mutual aid is when you do a dono drive. And the more people they donate to you, the better the chance you have of playing Amogus. Amogus. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Oh my god, I thought I could ride on my spider and I couldn't, and I'm sad. Um, mutual aid is supposed to be the types of programs you set up in communities to replace and get rid of your reliance on um, other programs that might exist in your, um, in like a capitalist society. So like maybe instead of paying people for uh, babysitting, paying horrible capitalist societies or whatever, you create like a mutual aid babysitting group where people pull in money and then from that you've got people that volunteer to work as babysitters and they get paid as much as they need in order to do their job or whatever. That's like mutual aid. Um, the, the goal behind mutual aid is not to just give people money. The goal behind mutual aid is to create some sort of ideally self-sustaining or some kind of sustaining program through donations or charitable givings or whatever, or maybe it makes money. Um, but you set up you set up these programs that exist as these like community driven things that serve as a counterpoint to uh, or a counterpart to whatever the capitalist counterpart would be. That's supposed to be what mutual aid is. But every time people say mutual aid online, they just mean donating to something. And that's like mutual aid. Oh, I do mutual aid. Really? What kind of mutual aid do you do? I do dono drives. Okay. Aid in the past have saved lives. Keep in mind that when we talk about the Holocaust, we often talk about, um, we often talk about the fact that people hid Jewish people in their attic. That is a simple act of mutual aid that saves a that's that's hiding jewish people in your attic is not mutual aid <laughs> what what oh carpools could be like a form of mutual aid kind of yeah a group that can save a life of many people i don't want to like okay so i'm right so i i always know i'm right these people have no idea what the fuck mutual aid is it's just random shit. i'm not um I'm not like an anarchist. I don't know theory that well. I don't know if hiding Jews in your attic was mutual aid. <laughs> no. I, th I've, I, I always thought something like that would just be aid. But the more broad thing is here is once you've got the language of genocide, it just I feel like it leads you to all these paths that are just so... that have nothing to do with the situation America's in. Um, like, if you're talking about anti-trans legislation, it's it's very difficult to downplay it to understate how bad it is i don't really think you should ever need to bring up the holocaust in comparison to it though i feel like i feel like bring like the holocaust is just such a useless allegory to 
like trans legislation in the United States right now. But yeah. But that's going to come up a lot as well. But I don't even disagree with her uh, with either of these, but I do find it strange that she would be so dismissive of groups that have been so crucial in fighting these laws. In her reaction to my debate, she seems far more interested in more physical forms of action. When I tried to ask Polly what exactly it is she thinks people like me should be doing differently, Demon Mama adopts Polly's position and says I should call it a genocide. She then goes on to say that she wishes cis people would push back harder against transphobia while someone in her chat says TOS prevents me from giving an accurate prescriptive statement on how to stop a genocide. But I guess if it's a genocide, that action is insufficient then, is it? What, what, what should I do? What, what more should I do? Uh, you should at least be willing to call it. Wait, hold on. This is a weird direction. He's being super defensive here. What more should I do? Well, call it a genocide. Call it what it is, dude. Don't fucking, don't fucking split hairs when trans people are telling you that this is an attempted genocide and there are ongoing aspects of genocide. No one's asking you to do anything else, although I would certainly appreciate it if cis people would, uh, you know, push back a little harder, just a little bit harder against transphobia. You know, just a little harder. You know, a little bit of rip and tear. Oh God, I want to play Doom so bad. Oh yeah, there's someone in chat. Should have pointed that out, okay. Um, yeah, okay. She uncritically agrees with a chatter who says I'm only in denial because I'm too cowardly to give up my comfortable life Am I not and take stone? action. Oh. The state elimination of, of elimination of the lives of... 85 D2D Derek with the $5. It sounds like Lonerbox is in denial because he's scared of the implications. He would be morally obligated to give up his comfortable life and take action or accept that he's a coward. Oh my God, shut the fuck up. You guys all live lives of comfort. The fuck out of here. Fucking loser. True. The state. Now, okay, this is where I think, fuck me. Um, I don't think it's that difficult to give your prescriptions on political violence without breaking TOS. Like this vagueness is so, I've given this, look, I've given this multiple times. I'll do it one more time. Um, I have said Stone. constantly Four. that um, if there was ever a situation, say like there were anti-LGBTQ riots, uh, up and down America, or even just in one town. And they were coming to smash up safe spaces or to attack houses or attack people in the street, then yeah, like defend yourself by any means necessary. Like I would never oppose that. Like that, may, that, that makes perfect sense to use violence in that situation. Same thing with Texas. If Texas ever succeeds in um, like a state conversion therapy program where they're dragging kids out of their houses and taking them to get converted out of being trans and you need to escape that state and you might need to... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, you might need to video game some uh, agents of the state on the way. Yeah, I wouldn't oppose that either. Jesus. The fact, why are these people being so vague about what they want people to do? Um, I know the answer. It's because they're fucking LARPers. Ooh. But like, if you look at this quote here as well, like, LARP it sounds like I'm in LARP this, alert. Agreeing LARP with this. alert. Like, it sounds like I'm in denial because I'm scared of the implications. I would be morally obligated to give up my comfortable life and take action. Motherfucker, what action? Like, first of all, I live in fucking Scotland, okay? I'm not even from America. Are you suggesting that like my moral compass dictates that every time there's a genocide going on, I have to get my fucking tin hat and my big boots and go over there and like sort it out myself? Is that what you're doing? Is this what fucking 8D, 5D2 Derek is doing? Is Are you fucking like, there's a genocide happening right now in West Sudan. Are you fucking like, are you? Have you been motivated recently to just jump over there and get all fucking rip and tear? Go for a fucking rumble tumble with the cartoon government? Probably not. Like, you're in a fucking stream chat giving money. You LARPing fuck. Anyway. Uh, that's not called giving money. That's called mutual aid. And you're a bigot. Huh. The hol oh, we'll get to the Holocaust. Don't worry, Silverheart. Um, ooh. When I make the point that genocides are descriptively different and require different solutions, she immediately makes up her mind and decides that I'm doing the Rosarist thing before I've even asked the question. So again, the Fed, post, the Fed posting thing, this is how quickly Demon Mama makes up her mind about my intentions being to ban this streamer. The reason I get pedantic about that difference is because 
the way you approach both of those issues is very different. One of them, I think the, the former one, of Wait. because they- Oh no, is he about to do the rose wrist thing? Is he about to do- That was it. <laughs> is do he, the rose is wrist he gonna thing? do the rose goes, wrist thing? If I admit that it's a genocide, then I have the responsibility to act more fiercely. Cringe alert. To rip and tear. Mm. And I don't want to think that I'm at the point in history where I should be considering ripping and tearing. Oh man. They are Dude. stupid and uninformed and have bad research. Well, the way you've been uh, uh, lobbying and. Oh, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, she follows this up once again, suggesting I'm at a point in history where I need to rip and tear. Again, if you have a position on rip and tear, use a euphemism, use your imagination and explain to me how it would work. That's all I want to know, okay? Given that this is over the topic of killing Republican lawmakers, like, how fucking stupid would that be? If you can't give a very categorical no to that suggestion, like, if that happened, the Republicans would win a majority, like, overnight. They'd have no problem. Like, they would ride that all the way into the polls, like, immediately. It's just such a stupid suggestion. Anyway. Um, unless, I don't know, I, I, I'll, I'll never know what rip and tear means because they'll never elaborate on that. All right. I don't think it's an accident unless, like, I can imagine maybe someone coping here and saying something like, um, like Stonewall. But again, Stonewall made sense. They were being physically attacked in their space. They were raided by the police for no fucking reason. Of course, it makes sense to use physical force like back again. I think there might be this thing where a lot of people, especially in the anarchist sphere, uh, act as if there's no difference between systemic and physical violence. But, yeah, well, that's going to be a common thread. I don't think it's an accident that people like Demon Mama are unwilling to outline their positions on violence, something which is easy enough to do with euphemisms, or to at least explain exactly how said positions would be helpful. Until she is able to explain exactly how a bit of the old rip and tear would work, or how it would be helpful at this point in time, I think people can safely call this nothing more than a LARP that she hasn't given any real thought to. Ooh. I have on multiple occasions. Oh. Some guy on my server is really mad when I give commentary like that, when I say like, ooh, so I'm doing that a lot today just for that one poster on my server, okay? Openly given my line for when I think violence against the state or even against other civilians would be morally acceptable. As I've made clear, I don't believe that point is now. However, if Demon Mama or 8D5D2 Derek want to explain to me how want to explain to me how going to the states and beating the shit out of transphobes or whatever else they're alluding to will help anyone, I'm more than happy to listen. Uh, since we're amplifying small trans voices, I want to give this honorable mention to a uh, Twitter user called Powerbottom Politics on this topic. If you're going to go and tell people that they should rise up, do it. Uh, Oliver is a trans man, he, him, sorry. Get your fucking self and stop telling- We'll go from the start, sorry, don't want to disrupt the flow. If you're gonna go and tell people that they should rise up, do it your fucking self and stop telling me what to do with my fucking life. It's like you gotta utilize your platform for this, that, and the other fucking thing. You Utilize your platform to help me wipe my ass. But then the second it's like, well, uh, we, we gotta start rioting and fight for our rights. Oh, but me, I'm just going to keep streaming. <laughs> That's my contribution to this. I turn on a camera every day. You quit your job and go, like, drive to the Supreme Court and fucking, like, throw rocks at cops with guns. Me, I'll just shit. I'll, I'll just, you know, stream a video while I'm taking a shit. That's my contribution to the movement. <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck you. If you. Damn. I like that guy. It's funny. Demon Mama also seems to have a very idiosyncratic view of what constitutes a genocide. She hints at me being the genocide denying type and argues that trans people who disagree on there being an ongoing genocide are also in denial. Galay, Galay says, how could Loaderbox think this way? He's been so based on so many issues, I'm shocked he's saying this shit. I was honestly surprised too. I never took him for like, I never took him for the like genocide denying type or mm. the genocide downplaying which is a form of genocide denial i never i never took him for that type unfortunately but here we are uh oh i have learned better i have learned over time uh i have grown uh i i've grown more wise and i have learned uh that uh he is a there is a certain denier. death orbit 
and that death orbit <gasps> can do horrible, horrible damage to people's otherwise based opinions. Oh, is it the destiny orbit? The way these people talk about Dustin is so fucking weird. <laughs> anyway, um, trans people are also in denial if they don't agree. No, but you can say, but you were, you were talking as if you were, as if you're like, the genocide thing is like me uh, refusing to listen to trans voices and all that. But I, I can fucking dig up. Like, I can, I can fucking pull forth like a few, quite a few trans people who don't like the word genocide either. So it's not like it doesn't matter if they like it. Trans people can also be in denial. There's a <laughs> lot of trans people who don't recognize how bad things are. Okay. <sighs> you either have to agree with me or you're wrong. And you need to agree with me because I'm trans. She would be this confident but also other trans people can disagree with me. <laughs> it's very likely that she just learned the UN definition of genocide in the middle of her stream. At one point, she even agrees with Polly's take that any form of systemic discrimination that leads to people dying would constitute a genocide, and then goes on to bring up the definition in an attempt to debunk my understanding of the claim. In responding to people him. die because of wait, systemic... Wait, what did I say there? Term, sorry. Idiot. In responding to People him. die because of systemic discrimination. That's not genocide. No. It, how is yes, that not is. genocide? If people die as a result of systemic yes, discrimination, is. that's okay. in the definition of genocide. He doesn't even know what he's talking about. This is pathetic. Can we, wait, 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 can we just, okay, can you just uh, under color me, right? of law? Just, wait. Can wait, you, wait, wait. Sorry, I, I can. I just want to do a debunk. I don't. I don't. I, I'm feeling a little paranoid here because I know people are going to react to this, and I want to just prove to you what I'm talking about. I just had this up. Hold on, let me just show you again, one more time, just so that we're clear. I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna show this up right here. What we, what he just said was that a law that, uh, uh, legal discrimination that leads to death is not genocide. I'm sorry, but the UN literally disagrees with you. Literally. Deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part. This is Article 2 of the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide. Going slower, Article 2 of the Genocide Convention narrows it. Also including deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of light calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part. Ooh. Causing serious bodily or mental harm to members of the group. Destroyed. Loner Box is wrong. Loner Box. Loner Box is wrong even by Cumstered its own definition. Dumpstered and dumpstered. This is phenomenally stupid. Unimaginable. Um, yeah, uh... I don't know. I feel like if you're paranoid about people reacting to your take, maybe you could probably like, I don't know what concepts on earth you would, you would never do this with any concept. Like imagine if I just looked up the definition of anarchism and then acted like I knew what anarchism was off the words in the definition. Thank you. I don't, this is so weird. I don't know if this is from my schooling days or what, but like when people do this thing, where they, um, they're like, no, like, let's, this is what this thing is. And they like give you like the dictionary or like a, like a one line, like argument for it. And it's like, bruv, like de definitions for these types of concepts are always going to be like highly contextualized. Like you're going to have to be able to speak quite a bit to describe what they are. It's not just going to be like a definition that you can read out of a book. Technically, this is even true of like DSM stuff, right? When we say like, oh, does this person have this mental illness? Well, checklist, checklist, checklist. It's not even really just reading those things. Like even all of those, even all of the diagnostic criteria will typically have like a deeper understanding involved than just like has anxiety in public. Oh, I'm anxious sometimes. Check has uh, trouble doing this. Oh, but like even that isn't as simple as that. Um, it's really annoying what people's go to is to like pull out like, well, let's see what the dictionary definition, especially because like if you, um, she probably wouldn't like the dictionary definition of woman. That's true. Um, but like, especially when you're like, just think about what you're saying, right? So any systemic oppression that leads to any type of suffering is a genocide. Um, I think it's uh, Loner Box said this earlier. That would mean that every single minority group on the planet is probably getting genocided right now. Like, it's just, your definition has become so vacuous, you know? Um, why would you do that? And I feel like if you're in a position where you're literally looking up- How can you prove a general consensus of words usage without the use of common definitions? Because you're not talking about a gen general consensus. You're talking about a, um, you're, you're talking about like an, uh, like a complicated concept. Um, it's... I'm trying to think of I'm trying to think of an example outside of music or physics. 
It's like when somebody says like, it's like when somebody says there are four dimensions and Einstein discovered that the fourth dimension is time. There's four dimensions four th and somebody's telling you that. And it's like, kind of, but do you have any fucking idea what you actually mean when you say that? Like, could you give me like a two sentence description of like, what is space time? And it's just like, well, time is the fourth dimension. And it's like, it's one of those things where it's like, if, if, that, if, you, like, if you read that as a line somewhere and you give that an explanation, you have no fucking idea what you're talking about. That sentence means nothing, right? It, it's just, and it's just the same here. Like, oh, genocide is when this thing happens. It's like, no, 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 it's, you need like more context. You really need to flesh that idea out. So we're not saying that every single thing on the planet is a genocide, okay? We have to flesh this out a little bit more. We gotta be a little bit more rigorous in our understanding of these concepts, you know? Um, yeah. Like going by Demon Mama's definition, right? When your culture is under attack, cultural genocide, blah, blah, blah. Like white people could say they're being genocided because they're being replaced in movies and TV shows and people are talking about the Mayo side on fucking Twitter and people are otherizing them by calling them white and blah, blah, blah. Like it's just, it's so stupid and vacuous, you know? It's, it's just when we're having like academic conversations about these things, it's not just like, here's like the line that I read that tells you what it is, you know? <sighs> the UN convention, like an international crime and saying that every form of systemic discrimination which gets people killed, which would be all systemic discrimination, like all systemic discrimination either like results in hate crimes or uh, suicides or lowered life expectancies or health issues, like all these kind of things. Like every marginalized group on earth is dying. Oh, like, fuck you, Lunarbox. people who die that they wouldn't have otherwise because of discrimination. Like that's just not like, but like, why would you do that? I feel like the international community is gonna be very busy. Like what would that look like? Just every country is policing each other for every form of discrimination or systemic racism. Like uh, it's so stupid. Um, I don't think it's an exaggeration to say this is Jordan Peterson's level of reading comprehension. Yep. Demon Mama is using exactly the same thought process that led Peterson to believe that C-16 would make misgendering illegal. Remember how Peterson said that C-16 would God. lead to people being- Peterson, not Peterson. Remember how Peterson, Peterson, Peterson? Why do fucking bongers and Scottish people get away with not pronouncing half their fucking words? This is what Peterson said. Who the fuck is that? I don't know who Peterson is. Disgusting. Jailed for misgendering because they would make misgendering illegal. Um, if the page ever loads. Why not? Why is that not the case? It protects trans people from discrimination. Is misgendering not a form of discrimination? Why wasn't it made illegal? Why is it not illegal to misgender someone in Canada? That's because discrimination has like a he more narrow meaning under law. Like, Wait, what? Who are you? Where, what part of NA are you from? There's precedent. And this isn't even a question of law, by the way. Like this is also, it's also just like a general question of language. Um, if you were going to look up the definition of a chair and just go by the words of, de of the definition and shoehorn everything that fits the words. Oh, he's getting dangerously close to the... <laughs> like, what is a... A separate seat for one person, typically with a back and four legs. Like, a horse with a saddle on it would be a chair. The reason it's not, again, like, I've explained this with the whole Wittgenstein thing as well, is like, a word gets its use yeah, not like, just from the definition, but from... Yeah, it gets its meaning from use. So... Oh god, it's so stupid. All right. Nah, For more another like example, Dickenstein. <laughs> Demon Mama's approach here is I a mirror it. image of Count Dankula trying to interpret a hate speech law. This is one to one, by the way. Like. Right, but anyway, this is uh, the gist of what is going to happen with this law. Um, adding age as a new characteristic in connection with the aggravation of offences by prejudice under Part One of the bill. Basically, if you call someone an old fuck. Or, I don't know, maybe even if you say something like, you don't understand just now, you'll understand when you're older. <sighs> Ageism. Jail. <laughs> <laughs> Straight to jail. Creating new offences related to stirring up hatred. What is stirring up hatred? What could constitute... Hold on one second. Oh. Oh. 
about stirring up hatred? Is that going to be clarified? Is that going to be set out as a set definition? So, for example, if I said something like, fuck the SNP, would that stir up hatred? He's doing the faces as well. <laughs> he's doing the little frowny detective face. That, yeah. He's just, he's just, inter he's, yeah, he's just doing the exact same thing Demon Mom is doing. He's just taking the words in the law and just arbitrarily doing his own interpretation of it. That's all that, that's all both of them are doing. Stirring up hatred in practice basically just means inciting violence against a marginalized group. That's what you have to do to stir up hatred. I think we get like nine convictions a year on average in Scotland for stirring up hatred because the threshold is so high. So I feel like if you wanted to learn a concept, whether it's like genocide or Marxism or anarchism or hate speech, like you would probably want to read like an article about it. Oh, or even another just destiny Wikipedia. take. Wow. Don't just grab the definition and just decide arbitrarily the meaning of everything. Like, it's, Good yeah. one. Because that's where you end up. You end up saying that genocide and systemic discrimination are just like, what, the same thing? All right. I'm aware that Demon Mama can just hedge her bets here and say she doesn't actually care about the UN definition of genocide, or at least she seems to only care about it for as long as she thinks it supports her point. And so she says here with Sunday. I just brought up the exact page that he had that he kept referencing the yeah. UN Convention on Genocide, yeah. and even in there, they're very clear that like the they they're, they take pains to say that like the Genocide Convention uses the most narrow definition the most narrow popular definition yeah. of genocide. And even then, I believe that it's very easy to make a case for an ongoing, active ongoing genocide in the United States based on the UN's, uh, oh, uh, shit. uh you know, this is parameters. Wild. But on top of that, who the fuck cares exactly. about what the UN thinks a genocide yeah. is? Oh, no, wait, uh, this I is... just brought... This works. I feel like, I mean, if you don't care about the UN definition, you can just say that, like, yeah, why argue but about it at all? It's also just like then? acting like it supports you for as long as you think it does. Like. Yeah, and then it's like, oh, well, I if don't she care wants to have that position, she can go ahead. But if you are going to interpret the definition in that way, you aren't really appealing to that definition at all. At this point, what you're appealing to is private language. This would raise the question: How are you deciding what is and isn't a genocide? If your understanding of genocide is that it's synonymous with any form of discrimination that gets people killed, which would encompass all systemic discrimination. What is the value in using the word at all? Demon Mama and the Holocaust. Uh-oh. Oh, God. We're ready for a bit of a circus show here. All right. The third accusation made against me from my debate with Polly was over my views on the Holocaust, specifically my assertion that the genocide of the Jews by Nazi Germany was carried out between 1941 and 1945. First of all, we're using the word genocide of the Jews here, okay? Um, genocide and Holocaust are slightly different terms, and some people use them synonymously. Some people say that they're a bit different uh, because they describe different periods, but we'll get into that, okay? First, let's look at how this question came up. When I asked Polly if she could give me examples of Republicans who want to kill trans people, she argued that this was an unfair question. After all, why would they be open about their intent? I responded by offering her some leeway and explained that intent can be inferred. I used the example of how Hitler didn't publicly express a desire to kill Jewish people until the war, but that the intent could have been inferred from as early as 1919. For some reason, Polly decided to move off the topic of intent and asked me when I thought the genocide of the Jews began. I was hesitant over this question because I know the answer is more nuanced than she would be willing to admit. I said 1941 because that seemed like the clearest cutoff point. Okay. Wait, can yeah. you, okay, can you tell me which legis- You've seen this quote before, so we'll just go into- What did I just say? Okay. Wait, wait, what did I just say? Okay, so, uh, what I think you said is that Hitler had genocidal intent before- Wait, when, when would you say the ge- uh, When would you say the genocide of the Jews actually happened? Or, or started? No, no, wait, that's not- the, the question is whether or not the intent- When the intent showed, right? So again, trying to keep her on topic. But okay. And well, now I'm interested in your answer to my question. Well, the signs of the intent were there from like 1919 when Hitler wrote that thing about yeah, removal. Yeah, yeah. But when war. would you say? When would you say, according to you? Are you trying you to get, maybe take note of how confident Polly sounds here, um, and how you know, despite what other people were saying, how you know maybe not so good faith. She's wait, wait, are you trying to get me into a gotcha to say when the genocide started? 
No, well, I want to know your answer. It's okay, so if I say anything later, than, no, you are. Don't lie to me. If I say okay, anything, well, if I say anything later than 1933 when the Nazis got elected, you've got a dunk, right? That's how. That's the kind of level we're operating at right now. Are you unwilling to answer the question? What? Day? No, I'm not willing. I think the genocide started in 1941. Final solution implemented and ordered in 1941. Okay, so. so okay. Oh, what was her response to that? Demon Mama believes this is an idiotic position. I I would be surprised if if it is a if it is a commonly accepted point of view that the German genocide of the Jews didn't didn't start until 1941. That seems like that seems. He reiterated that twice. It's an idiotic position. Literally impossible. <laughs> okay. I don't know how many references I would need to bring up until she admits she was wrong about this, but here are a few. Let's go through a few, shall we? We already remember the one this kind of suggests uh, from the 10 stages of genocide. He says this in the essay as well. Isn't it the most accepted? Now, she's going to say that, like, the genocide of the Jews started, like, as soon as Hitler came into power or in the fucking 20s or 30s when anti-Semitism. Or so it's going to be something, like, really dumb. Destiny, your inserters. What about my inserters? <gasps> You're right. Good catch. Suggesting that the genocide is being planned at stage seven. The genocide they refer to is the final solution. Genocidal massacres begin. So we go from final solution being planned to beginning at eight. Bearing in mind, remember the definition under international law was genocide is killing people. The state organized killing people. Okay. Let's go with this next one from the Anne Frank house. Um, the decision to resort to genocide Historians disagree about the moment when Hitler decided that all European Jews should be killed. A signed order does not exist. However, based on some other sources and events, there is a strong likelihood that the decision was made somewhere in the second half of 1941. Um, you can go to the Wikipedia, I guess, 1941-45, to 45, genocide of the European Jews. Um, this is from the Wiener Holocaust Library. This is like, I think they're... They're either one of or the oldest Holocaust library in the world. Um, in 1941, the Nazis' persecution of the Jews became a genocide. See, persecution and genocide are separate because they were different events. In just under four years, millions of people were deliberately murdered at the hands of the Nazis and their collaborators. This mass murder became known as the Holocaust. This is from a book um, called Teaching the Holocaust, um, sorry, the Holocaust Memorial Day Trust, the government-funded charity um, between 41 and 45. I can go a bit quicker. This is an article from JSTOR. Um, genocide was it the original plan by Yehuda Bauer, very um, prominent Holocaust historian. You can see here, when they talk about the plan, they're talking about the final solution because the final solution was the genocide. Okay. We'll read that article a bit more later. Holocaust Encyclopedia. Um, so this is where people are maybe getting a bit confused. If someone Googles the Holocaust, you'll get different answers because some people use the Holocaust synonymous with the genocide, 41 to 45. Others will say it was the period of uh, physical state violence against Jews, which was Kristallnacht onwards. And others will say it was just the entire process of persecution to violence to genocide, which is 33 to 45. Anyway. Uh, why did I link this one? Oh, yeah. The final solution was the organized and systemic mass murder of European Jews. The Nazi uh, German regime implemented this genocide between 41 and 45. Uh, what we got here? This is a Google book. Um, euthanasia to the final solution, the origins of Nazi genocide. So when they say euthanasia here, they're referring to action T4, which was when Hitler um, ordered, that's his order there, the killing of a third of a million disabled and mentally ill people. Uh, yeah, September 39. Um, that was, so the question was genocide of the Jews. There is a bit of a gray area with, uh, no, I'll get to that later, never mind. Um, but yeah, final solution in the euthanasia, those are the two genocides. One against disabled and mentally ill people, the other against Jews. Uh, okay. What we got here says, Again, just the contention about what people refer to with the Holocaust. Um, the term Holocaust uh, is most commonly used to refer to the genocide in which approximately 6 million Jews were systematically executed in concentration camps like Dachau, Auschwitz, and Bergen-Belsen. 
some of these camps were opened earlier uh, than 41, but they were opened as concentration camps. They were later, the death camp facilities were usually added on, and that was from 41 afterwards. Yeah, concentration camp and death camp is not the same thing, okay? I think the concentration camps, a lot more, a lot of them turned into death camps. I mean, it's kind of quibbling over words, but... This is from Richard J. Evans. He was actually the historian who testified against David Irving in the uh, Holocaust denial trial in England. There's a whole film about him. Um, genocide. He oh, wrote the book as well, the, Lying About Hitler. The book that we... The one book. Uh, when he's talking about... <laughs> um, sorry. Are you sorry? You little cuck. Yeah, genocidal ambitions in Eastern Europe, you know, Soviet Union invasion, 1941. Again, like, pretty synonymous. And then here, it's another one from Evans about the final solution. And he constantly refers to final solution here as the genocide, like their complicity in the genocide. Yeah, you can read this oral article if you want. They, uh, they had no real understanding. This is about talking about local Germans, I think. Um, unprecedented act. Yeah, okay. So... So, now that we know, yeah. fun fact as well, after our debate, despite acting as if she had caught me out on this point and accusing me of equivocating very offensively on the start of the genocide of Jews in Germany, this is Polly after the debate, he equivocates very offensively on the start of genocide of Jews in Germany. Um, she's actually using the word equivocate properly there. Like, equivocate doesn't mean equate. Equivocate means um, trying to conceal your ideas or trying not to implicate yourself. But. Despite that, Polly herself admitted to her chat that she didn't even know whether or not I was right. <laughs> if you bonk Desi in the head, will his hair turn red? Only if you bonk very slowly. Uh, uh, every time I see the dude's face, I get irrationally angry. Like, I was... <laughs> Is he right about the Holocaust? <laughs> Like, 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 I don't know. Like, that, that just seems wild to me. Somebody would... <laughs> I think we all voted on! What? Um, are you okay? I feel like, you know how video essayists make really bad everything uh, critiques of debate bro culture or debate pervert culture for being gender neutral. This is probably quite a good example of being in, being overly confident about your take in the middle of a debate, only to second guess yourself afterwards. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, without even bothering to check whether or not there was any merit in what I was saying. Demon Mama spends the rest of the stream getting increasingly excited and attempts to drop a series of bizarre statements and counter-arguments. She agrees with a chair who makes the point that the final solution was not the start. Wait! Wait, hold on! Hold on a second. This is really funny. Uh -oh. Somebody in Polly People's chat yeah. says, the final solution was not the start of the genocide. That's such a good, that's such an excellent point. The person she's quoting in chat doesn't even say that. You can see him here. He just says final solution was not the start. She added in of the genocide because she's like, you know, because she's seeing what she wants to say. Point. They. L that's such a good. That's such an excellent point. They. L the Nazis literally called it the final solution, implying they had tried other solutions before. <laughs> I'm not even mad at Demon Mama. I'm not even mad at Demon Mama. What I'm mad about is how people can actually watch her. How can you, how can you people be so stupid? It's your fault, I blame you. Cause I know I've, I've got at least a one, there's at least like three people that are mutual fans of us. This is, come on, are we being real right now? Oh God, oh, liberals are so lost. <laughs> she feels like she's just like fucking cracked the code. The faces get a little bit more animated near the end of this. I feel like she's really close to getting it there. Like, the final solution was the genocide and the other solutions were, you would call them ethnic cleansing. That's what they want. They wanted to move them out. Like, you know, those are different things. But, um, if you want a justification for why they should be seen as different things, um, the way you would pursue recourse for ethnic cleansing is probably different from genocide. Like, if an ethnic cleansing happens, you would advocate for, like, right of return or refugee rights or something like that. Obviously, with genocide, it's a bit different, but okay. Um, yeah, there's a whole article about this, the one I brought up from Yehuda Bauer, um, about how genocide wasn't the Nazis' original plan. Their original plan was emigration or forced emigration. 
And he actually goes through this to talk about how, although there's a bit of a gray area, when the Nazis invaded Poland, they, they, can, they carried out massacres that were targeted towards uh, Polish intellectuals and thought leaders and political opponents of the Nazis, um, a disproportionate amount of those deaths were Jews. So I don't know if like Tannenberg has been called like a genocide of the Jews. It probably has. I think I've heard it like once or twice. Can't really remember. Can I not but add? Oh, I Nazi can't add this. policy, and this whole paper goes through that, is um, up until 1940 or early 41 was still emigration. So their official policy um, up until 1940, were, there were two plans. One was uh, Nisko Madagascar, where they wanted to send them to Madagascar. The other one was, um, don't know how to pronounce <gasps> that, but Jacques Rublé, which is, this was their plan, it's a bit less known, where they wanted to uh, deport their Jewish prisoners over to uh, the Allies, to the Allied States. The idea was that they thought if a bunch of Jewish refugees Thank you. turned up in the UK or the US or whatever, no. that would uh, get the British or the American public to sympathize with the Nazi cause if they had a bunch of Jewish refugees arrive. But yeah, so um, this paper is really, really interesting. Um, even at the end, and oh yeah, also like in 1940 as well, there was like a memorandum from Himmler where he openly rejected mass killing. And by 1940, even Heydrich was still calling it the territorial final solution. It was in 41, just around the time of the invasion of the USSR. That was when it changed. If you're gonna bring up the Einsatzgruppen, yeah, they were, they targeted Jews. They were mobilized against Jews in 1941, in the summer. Yeah. Here, the last alternative was the final solution, which took form in 41 with the adoption of the Einsatzgruppen plan for the mass murder of Jews in Russia. Yeah. So, I think that covers everything. This, the, near the end of this paper, there's a really, really interesting part, like really spicy as well, where um, Yehuda Bauer actually suggests that the, um, that the final solution wasn't even inevitable by 39 or 40. He actually argues that um, one of the reasons it happened was because other countries in Europe were just unwilling to take Jewish refugees. He actually blames anti-Semitism across all of Europe for the reason that the Nazis had that many prisoners that they decided to kill them instead of trying to move them out. Damn. Which is a pretty uh, bold take, but yeah, this guy is like a really, like a high up historian on Holocaust. He's like really well known. Uh, the reason I'm being so thorough on this, by the way, is just because like, um, fuck, like I've never really tried to present myself as like an exceptionally intelligent person. Like I'm not. Um, what I think I'm maybe good at is that I put like I put like a lot of work and a lot of effort into the takes that I come out with. Like I second guess I second guess myself like constantly. I'm always like trying to make sure I've got multiple sources or uh, double checking things and try. And every time I say something I think is not true, I'll say I'm not sure or maybe this is wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. Like I do try really hard to get things right because you know like it's just. But. The fact that me and Demon Mama have like an audience overlap and the fact that that whole thing just gets kind of like shat on in the eyes of a few audience members or like four or 5,000 audience members just because this charlatan hack fuck wanted to get some dunks for her stream. Like, damn, it's, it's really fucking irritating, but Ooh. Like, she agrees with another chatter who accuses me of using the same logic as Chomsky and Tankies. Hi Hippie Punk says, this is the same logic that n that Chomsky uses to say that Srebrenica wasn't a genocide and what Tankies used to blow off Xinjiang. This is not a road to go down. I agree. Srebrenica. Um, Chomsky said S Srebrenica wasn't a genocide because they only killed men. Like, that's a... I mean... <laughs> He just completely ignored the fact that That's actually in most genocides, the victims are mostly men because the women are raped. He just ignored it. Like, he also said that- Oh, most victims of genocide are men because the women are raped? So you're saying rape victims aren't victims? Did anybody else hear that little slip up there? Good one, loner box. The concentration camps in Bosnia that had torture chambers in them were actually refugee camps. Um, when tankies talk about Xinjiang, they'll just say all the information they don't like that proves genocide is Western, or they'll try to discredit one of the people spokesmen for the UN because it's like, um, because he was a Christian or something. Like, really? 
That's what I'm doing? Okay, fuck. Even as I tried to qualify the point that before 1941, the genocide was set in motion, the conditions were laid for it, or that they were on the precipice, both Polly and Demon Mama completely ignore this, and Demon Mama decides to accuse me of downplaying and genocide denial. I mean... <laughs> Liberals are so lost. There was already, like... Uh, well, I guess there wasn't the... There were... There was already laws I don't know being why passed you find trying so to eliminate. You would just say you would say I that mean, it was set in motion. That the conditions were laid for it. They, they were on there the was law. Like no, what? no, but like, like, like no, there were already Jews it. dying. That's, if you were to say, if you were, if this was a conversation only about the Holocaust, all of this would be considered genocide denial because it is <laughs> because it's downplaying the very real threat. We only have this in hindsight because the Holocaust already happened. I mean. The real threat. 20 of tier what? four subs gifted. Holy shit. Thank you, Jeroflax. Uh, oh my uh, god. Um, Flooding the tier four sub market. I guess that's probably quite a lot of historians and Holocaust libraries that probably need to get held up for, um, for genocide denial, but. Okay. She agrees with another tire who says, My opinion on when a genocide starts, and apparently also that of every source I've posted above, is similar to what the Nazis do with Holocaust denial. Yeah. Uh. Uh, Killjoy 40k says what Lonerbox is doing is 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 similar to what Nazis do with Holocaust denial. I don't think he's doing it deliberately, but he's made a goalpost that can't be met except in hindsight, meaning nothing is a genocide until after it's already too late. Yeah. She even says there, nothing is a genocide until it's deemed one, but she changes that into it's already too late. I, in this debate, I mentioned examples of preventing genocide. This hindsight argument is so weird. Like, does she just think that I'm of the persuasion that states should just put their feet up and chill and stay at brunch until the genocide starts. I, it's, I don't understand it. Like, it's so fucking weird. All right. The point she makes about hindsight is also strange since I mentioned at least twice that Allied intervention was justified before the invasion of Poland. And I already mentioned that genocidal intent could have been inferred before the Nazis took power. Is she trying to imply that I'm pro-appeasement? that I don't believe in states taking measures to prevent genocides before they happen? Um, the answer to that is no. I think it's just like a very hollow critique with no thought behind it. Ooh. Um, she seems pretty excited to learn about the Dachau concentration camp, which opened in 1933. You want, wouldn't it be funny? Wouldn't it be funny if there was something I had in my back pocket? I like I The way that she treats this is so fucking gross. Like... Wouldn't it be funny if I had a top secret historical fact in my back pocket? Like, you could tell that, like, they have no idea, like, they have no context or great understanding of any of the history, right? Because who the fuck talks about history? Like, what if I told you that I have one secret fucking fact you've never fucking heard about? Like, oh my god, bro, chill. Anybody want to yeah, guarantee guess when you the first? She literally probably just learned about this like two seconds earlier, too, because somebody DM'd it to her. Like, Jesus, chill. When the first concentration camp for Jewish people communists and other dissidents opened anybody want to guess can we get a guess uh, uh, oh. uh, uh, 19 oh. 30 uh, uh, 3 22nd of march 1933 i don't know if i'm saying that correctly i apologize <laughs> i've literally never heard that word said out loud, I don't think. Or we know. At least I haven't in my mind. You want, wouldn't? We so know. Again, I know it's difficult to hear, but like genocide and concentration camps for political prisoners, I think Dachau was, they're not the same. It's not the same thing. Like, if you want to know why, again, you can just think about it. Like, if, um, if you had two criminals in front of you or two bad guys, so let's say one of them is an overseer from the Japanese internment camps in America, and the other one is like Rudolf Hess the guy in charge of Auschwitz-Birkenau. I don't think he would, I don't think he would convict those two guys of the same crime. Like, I would. one would be guilty of genocide, the other would be guilty of, like, human rights abuses, you know? This is despite me saying earlier in the debate that some kind of intervention was justified as soon as the first camp opened. Okay, I'm gonna peel away. Once again, Demon Mama isn't interested in this point. This is what I do think she learned about Dachau, like, in the middle of this stream, because... When I say when the first camp opened, 
uh, that was a, enough. That was a point to justify intervention. She just like she looks kind of shocked, like as if to suggest that's too late. I don't know. All right, let's continue. Later after it's over, but but that's not what that's not what we need. Okay, first of all, when okay when camps were opening, yeah, you could, uh, there was plenty of evidence to say that we're building up to a genocide and the urgency was there. Like again, I I, I just so they, you know, for my take on Germany, camps? I think the Allies should. I don't know what she's saying there, but it sounds like she's saying when they built camps as if that's like too late to intervene when the first camp opened. When, I don't know if maybe the Allies should have intervened when uh, Germany was still a democracy. Uh, the first camp opened <laughs> True. before the annexation. So no, yeah, actually, I'm would've... very for intervening as quickly as possible when that happens. I think that every government... Why Why the face? What the fuck? In the so Allied weird. States. It's like she just does them when she remembers to. We're too slow, okay? <laughs> so no. I don't know why you think just because I'm... Contesting you on terminology means you think I'm less urgent about stopping the problem. I don't know why. Oh, you there's think another that. one. What? All right. What? This is the, the climax she of the fucking Ooh. circus show. She decides to uh, blow me out with possibly the strangest dunk of 2022. Uh oh. Okay, uh, hold on. I just want to blow him out again one more time. Uh oh. Just so, just so we're clear. Yeah. The UN Convention on Genocide. Yep was not even put into law until December 9th, 1948. According, he, he just, let's just rewind here. I just want you guys to hear how fucking right I am and how fucking right poly people is on this. Wait, what does listen that have to, to do this with real anything? Quick. Let's just listen to this back. News listen didn't, up. Didn't start until 1941. That seems like, that seems literally impossible to me. It's, it, when, according to what, like legal definitions or? According to what legal definitions? Guess what, bitch? The legal definition you're using, the, the Holocaust at the time could not be considered a genocide because the UN fucking assembly on genocide did not happen until December 9th, 1948. <laughs> Does that mean the Holocaust wasn't a genocide? What is the argument she's even making at this point? What are you talking about? Okay. What it He did kind of get fucking dunkstered there. Um The word genocide was coined to describe the Holocaust and the Armenian genocide. Like you can retroactively call something a genocide. You can you couldn't convict people that's like, okay, yeah, the Nazis were convicted of crimes against humanity, not genocide, because it wasn't there until 48. But we're talking about describing it. She asked me when the genocide of the Jews started. And I said 48, like, yeah. And I said 41. He kind of got, got dunked. We're talking retroactively. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to give You know, like, DM murders the happened big w before there. murder was a crime. Before it was enshrined in law, and we can call them murders. Same with genocides. Um, I don't know if this is just like, people, people make mistakes. People make mistakes. After taking a minute, she decides to take this one step further. You, you want to you want to go even you want to go one further? Uh oh. You want to go one further? Oh god. You ready? You ready to go one step further? DM, he's already dead. Genocide is the intentional destruction of a people, usually classed as ethnic, national, racial, or religious, in whole or in part. Raphael Lemkin coined the term in 1944. The term genocide did not even exist at the time that he's talking about. So all of this stupid semantic nonsense is a bunch of fucking hot air. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that they, the term, yeah, like the term Holocaust, I think was invented to, um, I heard one argument that it was invented to discuss the um, Holodomor as well. I don't know if that's true. Um, that the person who coined it had that in mind, but um uh, at the very least, we could agree that it was probably important to uh, create it to talk about the um, Holocaust. But I, is she trying to—I don't know what her argument here is. Then that it couldn't have been a Holocaust because the term didn't exist yet, or <laughs> like the definition didn't even exist, so it wouldn't fucking matter if you called it a genocide or not. The terms, the legal terms, didn't exist at the time. Loner Box's argument is so upside down in this conversation. It's so ass backwards. True. You, you want to you like crush. You know what's really fucking sad about that bit? How much you just got fucking is destroyed? She has and now he's going to cope about the it. The screen up. 
not only on the Wikipedia, not only does it mention genocides that happened and are recognized in the 18th and 19th century and under the Ottomans. She, see what it says there. I don't know if you can see that. You might have to zoom in for World War One. You see the year there. World War One started in 1939. Um, they're not talking about when the war started. They're talking about the, the genocide because the the Wikipedia for genocide. And? What's his point? Like, what the fuck is happening inside this head? No one knows, dude. I don't even think Demon Mama knows. Like, what kind of, like, what kind of activity is taking place in this abandoned fucking air raid shelter of a skull? Jesus Christ. Oh, did I say the wrong number for World War II? Sorry, 1939. War started in 1939. Did I say 13? Sorry, fuck. Anyway. <laughs> You've misspoke, my sir. You've made a crucial error in your, your entire argument. It's destroyed. Oh, well. Yeah, this one is especially weak because she's citing Lemkin's definition, which was, in large part, inspired by the Armenian Genocide, which happened in 1915-16. to 16. Yeah. It's just an article about the Armenian Genocide. All right. A couple of days later, later, she makes the same point in a talk with President Sunday. She's had a minute to sleep on this argument as well. Like she's processed it. That is because uh, out of curiosity, I'm not trying to get a gotcha on you, but yeah. uh, maybe a, a, a meta gotcha on Lunarbox here. But do you sure. know when the term genocide was coined? Oh, I did, actually. I did, and I looked it up on stream. <laughs> I I've completely lost it. 1944. Thank you. So the word did not even exist to name the phenomena that was going exactly. on. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Already right. happened four years, you know, at yeah. by Lonerbox's own timeline. He believe, he says that the genocide began in 1941. That is because... Right. Lim Limeo. She caps off her stream by saying, I was completely unprepared True. and that I downplayed... True. Holocaust. True. And he's a fucking. Yeah, yeah you're Nazi. gonna go. You're gonna go and tell your chat now that I downplayed the fucking Holocaust, or that I. You yeah, did, that I you stupid idiot. You ooh, fucking moron. Ooh, you did. Ooh. It's not her fault that you were an idiot. It's not her fault that you fucking suck so much dick at your job that you came on here and fucking blew it. Ooh. It's not her fault that you came on here completely and utterly unprepared and accidentally did a little bit of a whoopsie doopsie down Holocaust downplaying. Ooh. Are you serious, man? It's oh not my fucking God. her fault. It's yours. You fucked up. True. You got everything True. wrong. True. You did a oopsie doopsie. True. Own it, man. Own it. Fucking own it. Fucking own it. I just dude. think it's nice to watch the uh, the confidence like after we've gone through everything. I don't know. The, the, the fuck me. This whole thing. This whole video is like, I don't know, watching her like navigate these points and a lot of them you can tell she's just kind of noticed them for the first time and yeah. everything like, I don't know. It's like watching a clown running over a minefield. Just, wow. You know. A clown? Let's go back to the presentation. A little transphobic there, buddy. Given that Demon Mama has admitted that her understanding of genocide is completely interchangeable with systemic discrimination, any date I gave after 1933 was already bound to be wrong. It would make me wonder. When did she think the genocide of the Jews began? Would it be 1933? Why not earlier? Would she really say you need to wait for concentration camps and a totalitarian regime to call it a genocide? After all, Jews were routinely dehumanized and blamed for Germany's loss in World War I. The German Supreme Court was stacked with anti-Semites and anti-Jewish attacks were not unusual in the Weimar Republic. In the late 1800s, Jewish emancipation in Germany was met with an immediate backlash from anti-Semitic parties, and before then, the Jews were de facto second-class citizens. By Demon Mama's understanding, the genocide Mel. of the Jews could have been ongoing from as soon as they started arriving in Europe on I Roman slave ships. But of course, when we're engaging with chills. Demon Mama, the common thread is always absurdity. No, I just heard my wife in the kitchen. This is because... <laughs> whoops. This is because she suffers from what we <laughs> no, in the industry chills. might describe as the dunk brain. When Demon Mama engages with other Problem. creators, she isn't listening to the substance Problem? of what they're saying, nor does she have any interest in understanding or fairly characterizing their um, opinions. 
There's the like a few people left in like the Twitch politics community, and it's just funny to, to watch them into like the realize worst how fucking insane positions. all the crazy The more cheap there, dunks so. and the more accusations of dog whistling, Nazism, yeah. genocide denial, Holocaust revisionism, or whatever else, the better. Um, well, there's a guy called Loner Box who's okay, except maliciously? he's Scottish. But, um, Who knows? Personally, he's, I think um, she does this because her first goal about everything uh, else is them. not to inform her audience. They're arguing about like when them. the Holocaust began, Honesty, and he's like, "Well, the Holocaust probably didn't begin until you know they started like killing Jews." To her. And they were like, "Oh the my God!" It actually started in 1920 when they were anti-Semitic. Riddled with inconsistencies, and now they all think he's like a Nazi. Oh wait, that's it. Yeah. Really? They think he's like, my voice went there. Pretty good. Honorable mention. I wonder if these people ever understand like if they go this extreme they are actually pushing the people like they're just making it worse they don't care though that's the thing it's because they're all like internet rich white kids like they don't care at all it does because none of this really affects them yeah they get all their creating a shit ton of issues because yeah but they don't care they get all their hormones and shit off online they've got like a ton of money like they, they're doing fine like they don't have to worry about or deal with any of the fallout of any of this shit so, so they, they make like destroying the world well no they're not destroying the world most of the world is fine they're just destroying other trans people right these people are like radioactive to trans issues like more so than like any fucking republican could ever hope to be there's like a really bad look for all the lefties as well yeah that too if lefties keep getting roped in with them yeah so there's not just trans we're talking about like everyone on that side that is a little bit more open-minded i guess yeah basically jesus chills chills (laughs) emailful Smugbug is a small streamer, averaging around 40 to 50 viewers, who came out of my community after having veganism debates with members of my audience. After getting into a Twitter exchange with Demon Mama, incidentally in a cursed thread on the topic of trans genocide, she had no hesitation in calling him a Nazi. But why? What was her evidence for this? So, with the word genocide... Oh, wait, Smugbug is the Nazi hat guy? Oh, okay, Smugbug is literally a Nazi. Literally. Oh. Okay, that makes sense. Smugbug is the Nazi hat guy. I did not realize that. Oh, yeah, he's on Team Genocide. That's right. True. That's what he calls... He, that's what he calls, uh... That's what he calls trans people who think there's a genocide going on. He calls us Team Genocide. Mm-hmm. What's going To his credit, even President Sunday... He's not a Nazi, he's an idiot. Wait, no, President Sunday, he literally, his his avatar literally has it. Okay, sorry, I gotta, I gotta prove this. Hold on. What's that guy's actually name? Hold on. Hold on. What's that guy's actually name? Oh, <laughs> did she just commit a fatal Hold misspeak? On. Hold on a second. I gotta show you this. I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. Ah, oh, here he is. Okay, here we go. So, here's the guy right here. See, this is this is a Nazi. This is the Nazi commandant hat. He covered up the uh, the SS symbol with the vegan police. But just so you know, mm. this is the this is the Nazi's hat. Mm. It's not just it's not just a military hat. Watch, watch, watch this. Ready? Okay, I'm gonna show you. Hold on, ready? Props, eh? He picked. Um, you can see him there. He picked one and it had the colors. I know what you mean, but it's a vegan thing. He's mocking vegans. Hey, hats off Sunday. Uh, pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> it's literally it the is. Nazi one. Oh my God. No, every other faction in the world di- stopped using these colors because the, with the Nazis did it and nobody wants to be associated with the Nazis. Nobody else uses the black and silver. I'm not kidding you. I don't buy that he's just stupid. Mm. This particular person. I think he's a Nazi. Sorry. True. All right. Base. I don't know if... um, I do. Like, I feel like if you have to explain it... Ah, and Loaderbox doing Nazi apologia. People call (laughs) vegans food Nazis. Like, militant vegan. Uh, Okay. Even President Sunday, who has interacted with Smogbug in the past, tried to correct her in chat, but of course, the truth was far less entertaining, and she carried on with the routine anyway. She went one step further and accused Smogbug of trying to hide the fact that it's a Nazi hat by claiming it was from the USSR instead. Thing about it is, is it factually the Nazi one? Yes, it is. Go ahead and look at it. But there's kind of like three different definitions of it. There's the colloquial okay, definition. Just, just and- he tried to say, oh, but oh, look, but but Soviet. 
Look, I'll just show you this. It's super, super simple. Watch. Okay. I'll watching. show you. Look. Show us. He oh. tried to say it's the Soviet one, what? but the Soviets used this one. Oh my god! It was green with gold. Oh. Nobody uses black and silver because oh, the Nazis used black and silver. I'm not kidding. Jesus. I'm not. I'm not like this is a dog whistle. It's just a. a it's not even a dog, dog whistle. whistle. It's, it's just a whistle whistle. Even Sunday. Where is he? Wait, what? What you oh, yeah. want? Not the start. Uh, all right. I'm not wasting energy defending Smugbug. He held his own for a little bit, but um, alas, servant Black. of the truth, no longer. All right. If Smugbug had tried to say it was a Soviet hat, it's not. It's a Nazi hat. That would be pretty dark. That would be a little bit sussy. I admit. If you look at the original thread on Twitter, nowhere does Smugbug make such a claim. This is a screenshot of the thread. The thread's still up as well. Um, they're talking here. Demon Mama chimes in here. Vivian. Appreciate you're really charitable and willing to hear us out rather than dismissing everyone on our side of the discussion as just Nazis or something. Thanks for always looking for the good in us. Your Avi is, I'm very sure, uh, ironically, sporting a literal Nazi commandant hat with one symbol change. Wait, why did she go I back to Angel's Kimmy? I wonder why people might mistake you for a Nazi. It is not a Nazi hat. It is a vegan Wasn't hat. Wasn't she like I am very proud something? of my beliefs and like to display them prominently. Yeah, totes, bro. What part of this didn't seem real, Demon Mama? Or plushies? So... The Soviet hat was actually brought up by someone else. There's Sansol saying it. That's not Smugbug. They're different people. The thread is still up. You can find it there. What she saw was someone else posting a Soviet hat, which she then attributed to Smugbug to make it look as if he was trying to hide something. As a very wise Twitter user once said, they don't care about the truth. The more ridiculous the claim, the better. Wait, who said that? Was it me? Who is he quoting it's there? A, it's a, from Demon Mama. Oh, fuck. I don't know if there's a word Never mind. for this level of projection. I feel like it needs its new term, you know? Um, as one final footnote example of Thought one's cool. brain on dunk, Detective Demon Mama, upon listening to a clip of me talking about President Sunday, <laughs> completely cool. mishears me referring to a group of Destiny associates and act as if she's exposed me as a Destiny associate myself. Associate? 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 With his like... Associate? Endless... As here. Can we just listen to the beginning of this, this uh, little clip again here? Take a close listen to what he says here. Tell me when you hear it. Fucking President Cum Day with his like <laughs> endless meltdown over every fucking like Destiny associate and then President like the guy and shit. Cum Day. True. Did you, catch it? Did you catch it? Did you catch it? So apparently Loaderbox sees himself as a Destiny associate. Ooh. These days. Those are his words, not mine. Caught. I never made that. Well, I said that some of his things sounded a whole lot like a certain person, but those are his words. So I, I just want you to like, you know, keep that in check, huh, okay? Keep yeah, that in mind. Yeah. Keep that in um, mind. What did I say? She, this is, she's listening to this for the third time now, right? The beginning of this, this uh, little clip again here. Take a close listen to what he what says here. Fuck Tell me when you hear it. Fucking president <laughs> come day with okay. his like, endless meltdown over every fucking like destiny associate and then like stalking the guy. And I'm referring to the fact that Sunday gets into fights with Destiny Associates and melts down over them. Because this clip is me talking about how um, maybe it's a better idea in the future not to think better. about how people are to me, but how they are to other people, i.e. the Destiny Associates. Like, she's like, how can you be this bad a listener? Hey, okay. By the way... By um, the way... I don't think I've really been much of a Destiny associate. Like, I've spoken to him on two he panels. He is a number one Destiny dick writer. One was arguing against him. He sends it. me every single unhinged rant you've ever heard from me has been him DMing me shit. It's the craziest stuff in the world. Uh, two days ago, he was DMing me the fatality rates for ear key toys, and he's like, look at this. Like, you should say that you want Vosh to die or something. I'm like, isn't that kind of like crazy? And he's like, no, 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 trust me. Like, your audience will love it. Like, every unhinged rant of mine comes from Lonerbox. Guaranteed. Every single one. Um, um, incidentally, to defend Demon Mama on the Hippy Dippy champion thing. Um, 
you can see my chat logs in DGG. I've probably spoken there about four or five times. Really? Um, I've always been much more of like a, like I came out of Vosh's community and that's where I spend like Yikes, my chat logs there bro. are pretty, he, pretty long. Cringe. Um, to admit that. Cringe to admit I, that. I don't know. Like, I have, like, first of all, Detective Demon Mama, I've never hidden the fact that I've been, that I've watched Destiny like on and off since, I don't know, like 2018, something, since like, I think it was the Jordan Pearson fan debate that I first watched. Um, but I might as well say like, if I ever do end up associating with Destiny more often, and that's like a reason for you to write me off. Fuck you. Just, yeah, leave. Cancel your Patreon and go somewhere else. Like, you strange fucking cultist. Like, whatever. Um, I don't know. Like, th the way that the people involved here are, like, when the fucking, whenever the, whenever the ghost of Dustin enters the room, like, they just, it's so strange. Um, and it's going to keep happening as well. Don't worry. But okay. She says this about anyone she doesn't like. I came out of Vosh's community and she called me a DGG or a Destiny Arbiter. Yeah, it's because if you if you want the lazy way, I get it. Because like lots of audiences are very poisoned against um, Destiny or whatever. So yeah, it's just like a very easy way to write people See what off I told without you? actually engaging with what they're saying. By the way, like I'm as much of a Destiny viewer as I was like last year when Demon Mama was sawing out over my videos taking down Lauren Southern. So uh, yeah, fuck. Um, our queen. I guess like you'll believe everything I say uncritically when it's attacking a right winger, but then as soon as like I have a contention with your like fucking trans genocide thing, then suddenly it's like we we turn on the dunk brain and all like charitability goes away. Like you know, it's weird. I'm gonna try to like match the tone of each individual person, so be a bit less boisterous for this part. President Sunday. You mean... After my first debate with Polly and several response videos from various creators, one of the responses came from President Sunday. Of all the people who responded to me, Sunday was the only one I already had some recent contact with. I had checked in on him when he was fighting with a bunch of DGGers, and he seemed to appreciate my concern. Um, this is just a... Sunday spoke about this DM publicly, so he'll be okay with that. Just, uh... I'm going to be a bit selective cropping DMs for Sunday because Sunday hasn't, he hasn't lied about any of the DMs. So like, I'm not going to show anything he hasn't spoken about. Um, but yeah, I think he actually made a tweet about this, about how like, m how much this uh, meant to him at the time. But Aww. Uh, even though I think he was completely in the wrong, like still think it's worth, you know, treating people like human beings at the end of the day. What was um, he in the wrong about? For some reason, people have been saying I ignored multiple trans YouTubers who reached out to me after the debate. President Sunday asserts the same here. Like once again, the only reason why I'm even talking about any of this right now, not the only reason why I'm talking about any of this, the only reason why I'm, I'm being looped into this is because um, in an effort to sideline um, Demon Mama Doe and other people like that, uh, Loner Box came to me. This is simply not true. Doe reached out to me before I ever spoke to Sunday. We spoke in DMs and I offered to talk over voice chat, although it didn't seem especially enthusiastic about that. This is um, Doe's messages uh, from October 25th, uh, just a couple of one or two days after the debate. You serious with this transgenocide debate? Is this just DGG stupidity? I've been hearing Destiny. <laughs> He's here again. Going around talking the about words like Nazi Dustin genocide don't have meaning strikes anymore. Again. I'm legit disappointed. I thought so much better of you. Um, better. And I offered to speak to Doe about this. Um, I do appreciate you coming to me in private, though. If it's something you think could be talked through in a private voice call, I'd be more than happy to, but no pressure. Um, I'd be willing to sit with you and rewatch that entire conversation with you privately or not. If you really want, we can go over every single point. If you really want, I'm going to take this as a no, I'm autistic, but I, I think this kind of suggests I'm not really up for it, but okay. Demon mama has said nothing to me. 
If you want to know why I didn't reach out to her, just watch any debate she's oh, had on shit. her channel. These aren't even connected. Ever had on her channel, sorry. Um, I did notice eventually when I got around to viewing her entire response, she did challenge me to a debate, but again, like, I don't know why she assumed I was going to watch that whole thing, like, immediately. Okay. Um, a non-binary trans person from Vosh's community reached out to me and we spoke about setting up a call on stream. The conversation ended with this message from me and they didn't respond. I'm not going to out this person because, but yeah, just this was the last message I sent to them. They didn't reply. So if they want to challenge that, they can go ahead. A trans video essayist reached out to me after criticizing me in one of her videos. The conversation was short, but very cordial. We exchanged some kind words and the conversation ended. Um, yeah, this person again, I'm not gonna, you know, put you on the spot or whatever, um, fine. Do it, dude, put him on the fucking spot. Man. President Sunday was not roped into this conversation. I only offered to talk to him after he made a five hour mega analysis of my debate with poly people. He had also appeared in my chat at least once when I was discussing the topic. And in any case, I thought I'd get a more productive conversation out of him than I would from Demon Mama. It's actually five hours. It just looks like eight on the thing. This thumbnail is very funny. Well done. Um, I'm not joking. It's funny. Right, uh, <clears throat> when Sunday and I were still figuring out a date for our talk, Polly had unexpectedly appeared. Okay, we're at the two and a half hour mark. Okay. I want to make some oatmeal. <clears throat> I'll be back. Stay chill. <laughs> Stim everybody for X hamster. He's out there somewhere watching. Appeared in my chat asking me for a second conversation on November 1st. Because I was fairly satisfied with this talk, I started to feel like the drama was winding down. I agreed, with, I agreed to talk with Sunday on November 7th, but I was admittedly looking forward to moving on to something else. Doe had stopped responding to me on October 30th, but it already felt like the conversation wasn't going anywhere. I'll bring this up later. Just to give you the date, though. This was when Doe stopped responding to me. We were both exchanging big, long messages like this. But yeah, this was the last before. Um, for at least like a, a Jesus week. Jesus Christ. All right. Three days before the talk, I indicated that I was leaning towards putting the whole thing to bed. That I would still talk if he wanted to, but wasn't especially fussed about it. To be honest, I'm leaning towards putting the whole thing to bed now. If you really want to talk, we can do Sunday or Monday. But yeah, I'm not especially fussed about it now. Uh, this is November 4th. Three days before the... Yeah, yeah. On November 5th, I noticed that Sunday had scheduled his stream on YouTube with the title, Is There a Trans Genocide? This was the thumbnail at the time. Yeah. When I asked if we could change the topic to focus a little closer on the key disagreement, he declined. I think we should change the title, though. What is a genocide? It seems we're at, since that's where the disagreement comes from. It's actually not. You'll see when we chat and I lay out my case. A little bit ambiguous, but okay. At some point, whether it was before or after this, I can't say, President Sunday had five people doing research for him behind the scenes. This is something he never told me about until he slightly alluded to it on the evening before our talk. The only indication I get of this is here. Why is the thing not centering like it was? Fuck you, chat. Go away. Three major issues I'm going to bring up in sequence. Um, here, this was the one indication. We're beginning a day-long research and prep stream to make sure we do it well. Have a lot of people working to make sure I'm as informed and measured as possible, so this should be interesting. Now... I thought he was referring to he's going to do his research stream and people are going to help him while he's doing research. That's all I, that's all I got from that. But okay. Until that point, all I knew was that he had one research stream planned the day before on November 6th, starting at 9 p.m. my time. The day before our conversation, I was watching his review of my debate with Polly People and I came across this clip, which I found a little puzzling. Because he's not taking account of the actual consequences of his decisions in this conversation. See, if he chooses simply to not engage in this argument and just goes, okay, guys, look, I don't, I don't agree with the language of genocide here. And I don't agree with the language of genocide here either, by the way. Um, I think the term is hopelessly fraught. And I think it, it tends specifically to debates like this that are 
It was weird hearing that after he put up a debate topic of is there a trans genocide, but... Um, only uh, obscuring of what's actually at stake. I think the term itself has too much evocations of of the conditions that brought about its initial use. I think we need uh, a more a more general and more specific term that encompasses things like general uh, systemic group annihilation attempts, right? Um, but given that this is this is the situation we arrive with, this is the situation we were born into as it is, um, and given that this term is already in use. Uh, the use of this term and its situation in, in our social imaginary and how- Mornaka, you're right. We do use democide for that. Yeah, you're right. How we, how we talk about these things. Um, that now becomes itself like a, a, a political entity with real weight. And if something has been identified as a genocide by one party and another party successfully uh, uh, counters that, no, this is not actually a genocide, the response from outside by the wider world is to downplay its significance and to turn away to things that are more serious. With the result that this thing is now better allowed to press forward and to advance to a worse state. There's something about the way he's talking about political weight here, um, even though the genocide argument is like, it, it's, I don't, I have never seen that much evidence of it outside of Twitter or like this very tight left wing space. Um, I don't know if I completely disagree with what he's saying there. That's kind of why I was leaning more towards just like leaving this conversation alone, but. I was watching the VOD and Destiny said he was sure Hitler was not okay with Jews emigrating, which is categorically untrue. The Nuremberg Law stripped Jews of their citizenships and had many of them flee either to France or British occupied Palestine. Do you think that Fleeing a country means the people that are okay with you emigrating? I can only hope and expect that the other world, which has such deep sympathy for these criminals, Jews, will at least be generous enough to convert the sympathy into practical aid. We, on our part, are ready to put all these criminals at the disposal of these countries for all I care, even on luxury ships. Direct quote from Hitler. This was in 38. So do you think that in the 40s, do you think that Hitler would have been okay with Jewish people emigrating from Nazi Germany? I just like the emote Huawei. The conference thus inadvertently proved to be a useful propaganda tool for the Nazis. Adolf Hitler responded to the news of the conference by saying that if only other nations agreed to take the Jews, he would help them leave.
so I think this was a profoundly juvenile display by someone I otherwise generally respect. It's extremely disappointing. My hope... My hope Ooh. is... that he can, at the very least... What even is it? My hope is that at the very least he can get out of his head long enough um, to recognize that uh, regardless of what he thinks about the matter, um, he's talking to a category of people that are actually fighting for their existence in a country not his own, in a context he doesn't fully understand, um, and that how you comport yourself with respect to these different actors has real consequences. And uh, sometimes it's... I will say, the fact that he's saying this in reference to one discussion I had with poly people, of all people, uh, for reasons we'll find out later, that's kind of funny. The best thing to do is nothing. Hmm. <sighs> Ooh, dramatic sigh. Um, I just thought from hearing that, get out of my head, um, I don't know, acknowledge... It felt like the only thing that people wanted from this conversation with um, Sunday was for me to like flip on something. Maybe not the genocide thing, but to like, I don't know, acknowledge my horrible behavior with Polly, which we've already gone over, just something like that. Like, I just have no idea. It was just really... Yeah. On top of this, he still hadn't said exactly what we'd be talking about. And besides saying, you'll see when we chat. At that point, I had been flicking through some of the response videos people had made about me, and most of them just seemed like reiterations of Demon Mama's points. Nearly all of them seemed like they were just looking for an apology for me. From me, sorry. I had no intention of doing this, and I didn't see how an hour of me sticking to my guns with Sunday would have helped anything move forward. From my end, it felt like the whole thing was settled, especially after my second conversation with Polly. That's the other thing as well. Lots of people were talking about how, um, the main thing, Doe said this as well, uh, that the big problem was my conduct with Polly, but I thought, what's the point in having that discussion? Because I've already spoken to Polly. If, that, if it's between me and Polly, we had a second conversation and it was chill. And that, as far as I know, that's the last I've heard from her. So it just seemed weird that these guys were trying to like insert themselves into that whole thing. But yeah. After seeing Sunday lay out the conversation topics, realizing this was never going to be a productive conversation and having other real life things to attend to. All right, is there anything else worth watching in this video or is it just the e-dramas? Because there's like an hour and a half left. President Sunday, Doe, honorable mention, Gay Fish, RGR, outro.